what up? I need, I need that sports encyclopedia. We you at, Steve Kim? Got trend in the cut. Yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? In the gym, shooting, I'm Duran. You ain't shooting, John Moran. Darnell is the Ball State legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to Yost. I love talking, talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that that are like-minded and and just are real and genuine better stay in your lane how, how is it you, you are fucking insane you dude what you just will not give this guy his power what is up what is wrong with you oh you must have thought i was a bitch i am him you's not it what's the topic with your logic when i flow big komodo i was talking gotta get back to letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and back it. Smitty and Jason Brown, kill the yeah, it's a rap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said, that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of, you know, the show, bro. Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up? I do it for the hoes. I got my four aces hat on, rocking it. My main man, P.P. Pat Perez, is leading out of the gate after one round last, last night out in uh, Asia. Uh, they're in the international tour. P.P.'s on fire. I think you six under. Shout out to him and uh, the whole international tour. They're on a 40-day event, basically, around the world. They went from... Jetta to fucking Hong Kong. Now they're in uh, another part of Asia. It's crazy. Live that's that live money boy. Uh, and you can all hate if you want. <laughs> he don't give a fuck. But listen, we got a loaded lineup today, and it is a fire show. We got special guests, by the way. Our first Thursday with Sean King, NFL quarterback analyst analyst. Uh, we're going to break that down. He's going to come on every Thursday starting today. Sean King, former NFL quarterback, Tampa Bay Buck, Tulane Green Wave. Uh, he'll be on every Thursday, so great addition. Clap it up. Appreciate him joining us. He'll be joining us talk all things free agency, NFL, QBs, and more. Um, but let's get it on, man. Uh, this is Truth Telling Thursday. We're telling the truth on Thursdays, like we know always, but we're going to tell the truth on Thursday here on the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. As we all need you to become a member today, subscribe and become a member to our Discord, Slap Nation. Download the Discord app and then find Slap Nation. We got a hell of a show. Big Matt McChesney is going to hop on on a special day on a Thursday today uh, to talk all things real. Plus, Steve Kim and our NFL quarterback extraordinaire, Sean King, joins us every Thursday, as I just mentioned, on the realest show on planet Earth. Titans and free agency moves. Make a addition with Calvin Ridley on a $92 million deal. Mason Rudolph, too. I thought that was two big gets for the Tennessee Titans, who I thought lacked roster depth. So they got that going. The Raiders released Jimmy G and Hunter Renfro, saving $19 million in cap. And are they possibly trying to move up the ladder in Vegas for draft day? We're going to dive into that. Chargers released Mike Williams. Uh, they save about $20 million in cap. Smitty and I have discussed this before. He's too injury prone. I knew Harbaugh was going to let, let that go. But kept Khalil Mack, who had 17 sacks last year at 30 years old. We're going to dive into that as well. Jerry Jones' defamation suit tossed from court yet again. So maybe now he can sign some free agents and not just lose them. We're going to dive into that. Yankee shut down. Pitcher Garrett Cole visits an elbow specialist here in L.A. today. The reigning Cy Young Award winner in his fifth year of a nine-year deal worth about $324 million, but he is 33 years old. We're going to give you an extensive breakdown on each NFL team's free agent moves today, the pickups, plus more. Plus, why is Nick Saban taking so much heat? 
for his statements on the Senate floor uh, earlier this week. Uh, we're going to dive into that. But before we begin, my wonderful co-host, Ball State legend and Naptown's finest, 317 Far East Side great, AR5 defending, Lamar Jackson loving, LeBron hairline having, Fox Sports' very own. Welcome him in, Big Smitty. What up, Big Smitty? What's going on? Y'all, y'all good? Y'all good? Uh, let me see my, uh, let me make sure my hair could look straight. Oh, I know, Smitty. I don't know if you're ready. Like, I don't feel the energy. You know what I mean? I, I think you're mad. Uh, I think there's some girls hitting you up, saying they don't like me or something. I, you know what I mean? We're going to find out. We're going to find out. I I'm not mad at all. Listen, I just see a lot of people in your comments and our comments disagreeing with your don't don't scratch your face don't scratch your face disagreeing about your comments about women coaching that's all i'm gonna say that's all I'm i know saying. all guys um see some women yeah i haven't i haven't but listen the first woman though on tiktok responded on the show i had a i had a i posted it yesterday it was going viral and then they deleted the fucking thing the tiktok took it off tiktok just took my video down yeah, I'm almost out. I already had like almost 200,000 views over like 30 minutes. They took it down. I'm like, all right, here's a here's a big video. Guess what? Then they brought it back. We appealed it. They brought it back like 30 minutes later, and it just died. It didn't do shit. And I go, that's TikTok, man. I hope they ban you, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm talking to you TikTok on live right now. Hope they ban you, motherfuckers. But anyway, the cool part is a woman hit me up and was like, your facts are not true, blah, blah, blah. Come watch me in Canton, Ohio, as I am the director of operations for the Women's League. That's not a coach, though. Thank you, Smitty. I appreciate you defending your co-host. I appreciate that. And that's exactly what I said. I said, no disrespect, sweetheart. Uh, you know. Operations, they, they book travel. They, they, they get you food. Women, women get offended when you say sweetheart like yeah, that. Yeah, because now nah, be real. They think you're not They think you <laughs> And it's I like, know that, by the way. Hey, she responded though, Smitty. She responded by saying, sweetie in caps, back to me like, well, like I said, I'm willing to come on the show if you want to talk football. So I didn't realize she sent me a huge DM two years ago. Mm. Wanted me to come speak to her people and, 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 and all this. Dog, listen. I don't is, she, have, is she coming on? She hasn't responded since. Are she nervous? Uh, you know, people talk a good one. Um, but it is what it is, Smitty. We, we, we got a lot to dive into. But listen, uh, those videos obviously are keeping the ball rolling on all platforms, Twitter, Instagram. We got one more of the series. <laughs> one more video today uh, that we'll be dropping with Steve Kim, Smitty, and I. That one should be interesting. Um so we're going to have that come out. Um, you know what's crazy and interesting uh, DM that I got from one of our co-hosts' mothers or one of our guest mothers? What you get? Um, talk to Sharon Moore, by the way. He'll be on next week, head coach Michigan. Um, I said, listen, I'm not going to say who it, was, who it was, but I said, you know, you know, not one woman has disagreed with me, uh, only soft ass men. She goes on and says, because the women that aren't saying anything are afraid to get their feelings hurt. Those men saying everything are married to those women. Ooh, hell of a point. Hell of a point. <laughs> hell of a point. <laughs> hell of a point. They are speaking for their women because their women don't want to get course. cussed out by you. Yeah. Of course they are. That's why I've been telling y'all there ain't no women coming forward. But uh, you were saying a woman coming forward as if they all agreeing with you. This is saying, nah, they're not agreeing with you. They just don't want to get cussed out because they know if they say something, you're going to go in and do all type of stuff. But the real women are actually agreeing with me on my. Well, who defines real women and fake? Well, you not on. Time out, time out. You call people real if they agree with you. You call them fake, soft, and phony if they disagree with you. No, I don't say that. Why can't it be a real woman who disagree with you? No, I didn't say that. I said that show me the the real ones that will at least have a discussion. You know right away they're fake when they don't even have a discussion and say, uh, you know what, JB, I disagree on this or, dis or I agree on this. They just straight go into racism sexism they don't give they don't even want to have a conversation because they they don't have any depth 
in their soul. They can't have a debate. They can't have a debate. So they they just go straight to some bullshit and they want me to respond. I can't no more because Instagram's on fire and then they'll delete me. So I'm real selective on how I I did say something you caught yesterday though, and then uh, you let me know, and I didn't even realize I said it. Uh, but uh, but at least I didn't cuss or nothing, so I didn't get banned on that. Um, that was hilarious. But yeah, people really think like I give a fuck what you say. <laughs> Motherfucker said, <laughs> Motherfucker said, I I never agree with you, but I agree with you on this one. I I don't really give a fuck if you do or not. JB never. said, I could care less regardless either way. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, really up, I, that. I mean, I really don't. It's like, I don't really care, dog. I, I, I don't really give a fuck. But anyway, it's a whole nother ball game. Smitty, um, first of all, let's get into it. We got a loaded lineup. We got Big Mac going to hop on uh, in about 45 minutes. Mm. Um, on a on Thursday, Thursday, he wanted to come on here. Uh, he had a crazy event, full day yesterday uh, with some personal matters he had to handle. Steve Kim's going to jump on, of course. And then our, uh, we're in the show today with our QB extraordinaire, Sean King. Uh, we're going to dive into that. Plus, we got lots to break down. We want, I want to get through. Uh, I wanted to go through all the teams, or at least we can do half today, half tomorrow. Uh, I, I did a lot of work on it yesterday, extensive-ass breakdown on every single NFL team. Uh, it's in the rundown. We can go through each one, each team that lost somebody, signed somebody, and we can grade them out. And uh, to today, up till today. So we could get that going at least. But before we start, Smitty, let's get to the quote of the day. Um, brought to you by Bet Online. What up, what up, what up, man? The real Coach JB here for the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course, for the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today. Become part of the team and remember to use promo code. Believe B L E A V for fifty percent off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Peace. All right, Smitty. Um, talk to me. Talk to me. Let's get to quote of the day. Uh, quote of the day brought to you by Prize or brought to you by Bet Online. Um, sometimes when things are falling apart, they may actually be falling into place. I love that. I love that. I'm just keeping it real. That's what happens. Your initial eye might seem like shit is going bad because it's not going according to your plan, but your plan ain't the plan of the higher power. JB, keep going, man. Talk to him. Preach, Big Smitty. Preach. Uh, Contrary to belief. Now, this is real, and I said this because I I want to make this myself. I don't trust words. I trust vibes. People can tell you anything, but a vibe will tell you everything. What's my vibe, JB? Today, I don't know. I don't know if you took if you if you came in with like venom on your mind or like trying to be soft and cater, nurturing, not soft, nurturing. Are you got a nurturing vibe today, or are you got I'm just venom coming in, in with an understanding I'm mind in today? Oh, I want to know. It is truth telling Thursday. Yes, it is. Do you yes, got venom in your veins, or do you got? Nurture vibes in your brain. I'm in an understanding mood right now, JB. I, I didn't wake up with the mindset of just cussing you out and arguing. You know, I, I say, you know what? I'm going to wake up. I'm going to let JB say his piece. I'm going to really like digest it and try to think through it. I'm not going to spaz out. I'm not going to curse a lot, at least to start the first hour. We'll see how things go once the I'm show sure goes. I'm sure I get that rise out of you. I'm sure I'm, I'm pretty good at getting a rise out of you. Pause. Uh, Fucking pause. We both get uh, pause at the same time. <laughs> you know, Smitty, I don't know. We got, I got a, uh, <laughs> say it, say it. Uh, I'm going to, but we got a poll question. Um, I was, I put, I asked you in the, in the chat uh, before we get started, but I got a poll question first. And uh, the poll question is oh. drop, drop it in the chat. 
All right. <laughs> Who has won free agency so far? That's the poll question. Drop it in the chat in the comments below. Uh, who has won free agency? We're going to dive into free agency in totality. Um, but that's a tough one. But listen, Smitty, I'm going to skip from Calvin Ridley at number one. We're going to go straight to number 10 on the list here because I don't know. This is, I want to give you some context to this whole thing real quick. Yep. And then I want to dive into a little bit of the political side of this thing with Aaron Rodgers right after that. And then we'll move on to the top of the list. Let's do it. Because then Matt and then we'll come on anyway. So I got to ask you, uh, several Division One coaches obviously have seen what we I've been posting. And listen, they know in confidence I would never say their name. Obviously, they have to walk on eggshells. And they know they can't come out and ever say anything. Um, I don't know if you caught a few of the guys in the comments. Former NFL players have been commenting on. I don't know if you caught those. But anyway, uh What's what's kind of making it worse is that I did the Caitlin Clark. Bailey's not a great producer yet. See, he's 21. He don't realize he set me up for failure. I'm just, kidding. I'm just kidding with Bailey. But we did the Caitlin Clark thing, and then it came straight to the woman not coaching thing. So now I look like a fucking you, womanizer. You've been clowning women the last month, yeah. month and a half. <laughs> Ain't no goddamn month and a half. Month and a half. All right, like. so. So it looks optical wise, it looks worse than it is. But listen, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to back down because of something I believe in that needs to be told. But several, when I say several, I mean several Division I coaches, head coaches also, have responded in privately to me. And it was like, JB, fuck, dog. I wish we could say the truth. You are dead on, balls accurate, and it's fucking unbelievable that this is going on, but I want you to look at this. And I'm like, what? Oh, this is going to ruffle feathers, and I'm just telling you. I'm just giving you a heads up. I'm not going to tell you any names, but these are coming from D1 coaches, okay? So you know what people are thinking out there. Smitty, There's a woman Division I quarterback coach out there at Brown University. Clap it up. Clap it up for Heather Marini, assistant coach, quarterbacks, May 2019. 2019 was a big year for a lot of these women coaches for some reason. 2019, Dickey University. Oh, there he goes. Marini coached Brown's quarterbacks to another historic season in 2021. Led a senior All-American, E.J. Perry, who I believe got a shot in the UFL or XFL. Under the tutelage of Marini, Perry earned numerous accolades, including being named a finalist for the Walter Payton Award. A status performed, third team All American, the Bulger, the Bulger Low Award winner, mm. blah, 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 blah. Okay. Eden. Heather Marini enters her fifth year, fourth season on the Browns coaching staff. Now, Excellent. I have not heard one person tell me this. Did you know this? No, because we don't watch Brown. We don't watch Ivy League. I, I don't care. It's a Division I school. Why hasn't it been promoted? Why hasn't it? You know, I'm just trying to figure it out. Now, I want – Bailey, can you please find me the head coach at, at Brown's um, – at University of Brown and tell me the head coach's name? But anyway, um, she is a woman – I want to give you a little background – from Australia. Mm, okay. She still plays – supposedly some sort of competitive women's league. Um, she knows the game. Okay. Okay. So believe her father was uh, also a coach, of course, there. And then I think the the head coach at Brown right now was her father's best friend. He yep. kept her when he left. One of those deals. So it's nepotism, etc. I love nepotism. All right. So um, she never really played. She never really went to school. She never really GA'd. She went through a Australian rules type of deal, and she became a head coach 
operational director in Australia for some league. Her first, Bailey, pull it back up. Her first, I want to pull it up. Do we have her bio uh, or in chronological order on where she went right out of Australia? It's not on there. So right out of Australia, Smitty, I want you to let, I want this to sink in. Yep. She never coached yet. She she was coaching. Well, she she did coach her whatever league it was in, yep. in Australia. But she never been to the States and coached college, high school, nothing that, you know, most people you think that coach in the NFL would have to do. You think, you think, yeah. Her first job, homie, was with the New York fucking Jets. Now, please, objectively, whatever, tell me how that makes sense. What was she her job coached, with the Jets? She never coached American football in the States. She doesn't play college. She never played high school here. Never played college here. She never coached high school or college here. But her first job is for the New York Jets. Now, I'm trying to figure this shit out because I would love to have her fucking agent. <laughs> I, now she's at Brown University, and I love the bio where they say that under her tutelage. Yeah, because you play the, the quarterback. She's the quarterback coach. Uh, yeah. This is the quarterback's statistics or success or rewards under her tutelage. Like that's that's the proper term that's to cool. use. You read that to me. That can it says Marina Kerner says. Anyway, I, I knew her first gig was with the Jets. Yeah, but do we know if if not, don't worry about it. Do we know the exact what her what that gig what was it an internship? Was it a it don't matter, Smitty? That's my point. It doesn't even matter if it's an internship. It is to even even get, do you know how hard it is to even get a, I, I want to be clear? Like people act like these jobs are posted on LinkedIn and anyone in the country can just apply and they go off your resume. No, it's not how it works. I'm sorry. This is not how this this business works. I, I want to be clear. I don't care what she's done. She had zero resume to get a job in the NFL. And I got to be honest, I'm just being honest and clear here. How did she jump everybody else and go straight to the NFL? Like, I just, I'm just asking this question because who and how do, did she get in contact with me? That's the number one part of this thing. How do you get in contact with the New York Jets and the NFL and get a job all in one? It, do you know how hard it? I want I want to do somebody to do a study and just try to get a hold of an NFL human resources department and ask them how to apply for a coaching job. I want you guys to just go do some due diligence and then come on the show. I'll bring you on live and tell me. And I would give you my house if you can get a hold of somebody on the phone that gives you any information <laughs> like people act like it's falling off trees like these jobs just fall off fucking trees oh, yeah, it's easy to get a job in the nfl it, it, it's blowing my mind well, let me let me break it down to you jbc thing is they have this thing called the nfl's women's forum they started that thing back in 2018 2017 and it's a it's a uh, an event put together specifically to you know, kind of encourage women in, in, into being engaged and coaching, involved, et cetera, within the NFL. And I think these forums and these funds, they, they even have funds for NFL uh, for women as, as well. I think they've pushed a narrative. They, they, they've put out resources in order to help expedite women, women, excuse me, getting these opportunities. So that's 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 just being real. That's why it's happening at such a high rate. Because at the, end of, at the end of the day, NFL is about making money. How do you make more money? Well, you bring in a woman audience. How do you bring in a woman audience? By doing things like this where you bring in women head coaches and women position coaches and show that you're open for everybody, no matter what your walk of life is. It's not just the super masculine men anymore. You're not open, opening up for everybody. So that that's the how and the why. Is it fair? No, it's not fair. But like I said, I've always believed in, in nepotism. So if you hey, have you a some sort of connection or a coach or your father coach or something like you, that, you heard of the you're able to get put on, it happens. You know, you it is what it is. Hmm? You heard of the Rooney rule? Yeah. Uh, you heard about, you know, black equality and coaching in the NFL. They started that shit in the 80s. How many black head coaches y'all got? Well, we got a lot now. Y'all got a lot. Well, we got we got like we got like a decent amount now. Like it, I mean, it's 
Come it's on, probably, it's probably the most it's been. But what are we talking about? This is all about trying to create narratives where the shit don't fit. Like, let's be real. You should not have to create a Rooney rule for a race. Of course not. It's, it's and, stupid, and it's but it's reality, though. It's reality. It's a slap in the face. And I, I tell, I've talked to Marvin Lewis. I've talked to these guys. I had Marshall Falk on this show, and we talked about it. And Marshall was like, JB, I said it. I went on a limb right before I went on McAfee's show that day. And Marshall agreed. Said, I fucking agree 1,000%. I told Marvin Lewis, don't take the interview for the Cowboys. You know you're not getting the job. It is a token slap in the face. And now every other brother that thinks they got a shot because the rule said I have to interview one brother, now guess what happens? Jerry Jones knew you weren't getting a job. Literally two hours, Smitty, after Marvin Lewis interviewed at the, at the fucking Cowboys, they hired McCartan. Two hours. You don't think they knew who they wanted? You don't think they already knew? It's a slap in the face until you shut it down and say, fuck your rule. I'm not going to go through your token interview. It ain't going to change. If that's the case, JB, then unfortunately for our people, we would like we would never interview then. We would never get a job. But the, the, the uh, reason why the rule is created is true. to hopefully give you an opportunity. And we have seen an, an increase in black head coaches the last couple of years. Another rule they got as well is this, this uh, and I might be saying the word wrong, but this compens- compensatory draft picks. We're basically like, I think every year, these teams get incentivized. So, like, if exactly. a if, if an assistant coach is a exactly. black coach leaves your team, then you end up getting a, a, a draft pick. Exactly, a minority coach. Like, another incentive. I, I'm be honest. I, I can't speak for for you, brothers, sisters. Yeah. No, no. I'm not gonna speak for the black community. But like, if it was for me, if they tell me that, well, hey, and it can't be this way because white yeah. folks fucking can't. They don't have this issue. But um, like, I, I would be like, what? Like, do you know how many brothers are needed on a college staff and a I, NFL I know, staff? I know how much we need it on all levels. Like, without, I, I, without a brother, just so we're clear, without brothers on staff, you have a mockery and a shit show and a fucking riot on the hands of a, these old fucking whites who can't manage the locker room. Number one. Number two, percent. Number two this is why I don't agree with you, what you said to take the interview. It is a fucking whole situation. Like I agree. Like it's, it's fucked, fucked up. up, JB. So it's like it's like it's like we have to take the interview and get a a, a small chance, or don't take it and, uh, and have to change careers. It's like, like what option do we have? <laughs> it's a double edged sword, and I always say it. I go, listen, interviews are priceless. Take them. I'm on record. Take the interview; they're priceless. You'll never have them. But at the NFL level, the Floreses of the world and these other guys. They are well. Re- they are so well respected by not only coaches in the league but players that they will have earned an opportunity. They will earn an opportunity to do or get the interview the original right way, like a Denny Green way or a Tomlin way. Or see, Tomlin didn't interview. See, that's what people don't get. Tomlin was grandfathered in because Coward just left. It wasn't like they went through a process and he had to go re- around and, and, and interview at a bunch of places. But right. Tomlin at least went out and said, fuck it, I'm going to grab Flores from Miami, who fucking yeah. basically blackballed him pretty much. Like, I said, Nico Ryan, if he goes to interview last year, he don't have a job. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you at least got an interview. I'll take the interview. I get it. But at the same time, when you're in the NFL already as a coordinator or someone like that, now the enemy is a little different because of we know the whole situation on that. Right. But go fucking go do what you do, and you're gonna get an interview. The fake interview, though, Smitty, to me, I don't. I think it actually is harnessing y'all. I don't believe it's helping because it's a fake interview, and your agent already knows. That's the thing. These cats already know, Smitty. They already know going in. It's just to say I went and interviewed so ESPN can announce that Marvin Lewis got the interview. Eric Bieniemy got the interview. The agents already know who got the job. So, like, I don't... I guess my I, question for you, JB, is, though... My question for you, JB, is, um, like, how how do you know which teams are being fake and which teams are being real? Because, obviously, there are, are a lot of black coaches now who actually have jobs, whether it's coordinating, whether it's position coach, whether it's head coach, et cetera. So, some of these jobs, some of these teams are being real, and they are giving you a real interview. So, as a black man, how do I know which ones to pick, which ones not to pick? So... Well, I guess what I'm saying is I agree with you. The whole system is fucked up. The fact that we have a Rooney rule is ridiculous. You should not have a rule that's telling you you have to interview a black man. Like, it, let, let you know like how racist has been for so long. 
It's almost like Black History Month. Yeah, it's like you're trying to force. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Why, why, why y'all need a month? It's crazy. <laughs> but again, <laughs> JB, the history of our country is fucked up for our people. That's just a fact. Ain't no way to sugarcoat it. Ain't no way around it. And in the NFL for so long, you got to think about it. It starts from the top. Who runs these teams? White man. They're going to hire their GMs. are going to be white men. The GMs are likely going to hire a head coach who's going to be a white man. That head coach is going to hire most, not all, but a lot of his his team of other coaches and assistants are going to be white men. Why? Because that's who, that's who they're used to being around. And that's not even a racist thing per se. That's just like, me, if I if I ran a big company, I would probably have a lot of brothers in there because that's just my environment. I grew up around mostly black people. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's, that's just a natural thing. So they, they invented the Rooney Rule in hopes, I guess, that it would lead to more hires. But in reality, to your point, they're doing these fake interviews just to say they did, just to check off a box. That's it. But as a black man who wants to coach, it's like I can't really afford to just skip an interview because, I, like you said, they don't come, uh, you don't get the opportunities a lot. So I got to just take every fucking interview and just put my best foot forward, put my best resume out there and just see what they say. It's all a fucked up situation. We, we are in agreement on that. But it's just like, as a black man, what do I do? Do I riot? Do I just say, you know what, I'm just not going to interview? Well, yeah, if you don't interview, you'll definitely not get the job. So you at least put yourself in position to possibly get it. Yeah, I just, some at some point we we, we like I've never in my life sit there and look back and be like, fuck, I, I got to hire. I had to hire this guy because of this color. Now, you're different. D- Dion's on record, though, and I am on record as well on Netflix. There are certain position coaches that I'll tell you straight up right now, like like Sark and other guys. We've had these discussions. Certain areas of the country, be- based on where you're the head coach, you got to get a brother at that position. And those positions are receiver and DB. You better hire a brother at receiver and you better hire a brother at DB. Coach, coach. Yeah. All right. If you're in Georgia, Bama, SC, UCLA, we could probably go on and on and on. You know, Michigan, Ohio State, probably Penns. I don't know, but. This is why I always knock nepotism when when you get the whole Belichick hiring his son to coach the secondary in the fucking man's league, and you get a guy his and his son coaching the backers in the man's league when ninety percent of those players are black, and I know a hundred other coaches more qualified than Belichick's two kids, by the way, because Belichick, let's be clear, runs that defense. He puts in the scheme. He coached up his kids. But they just got jobs coaching corners and safeties in the NF fucking L where there ain't a white corner or safety. I mean, we, we know there's a few, but let's be real. Yeah. So <laughs> come on, man. That is why I hate nepotism. Cause I, this is the same argument I have about the females that the females are not only taking black head coaching jobs for men, they're taking men's jobs that have been grinding the whole time that have been moving up the ranks. And some lady hit me up last night, the first woman that kind of hit me up with a little snarkiness. I'm not mad. I'm like, hey, I had a great conversation. I'm not going to disrespect no women on there. I said, listen, she said, well, when men coach women's sports, y'all don't bitch. We don't bitch. Mm. And, and, and then I responded, and, and then everybody killed her, and I feel bad. I and My response was not to kill her. My response said, basically, Excuse me, though. There's not a sport on this earth that you all play that we don't. Mm. But there is a sport on this earth that y'all don't play that we do. That's the difference, dog. There's just no equation. There's no equal. But they do play, though. We don't respect the league, but they do play, though. But I, yeah, but it's not it's not the same sport, Smitty. It's not the same. It's not basketball where it's the same five on five, same. We talked about this three, two defense, two, one, one. We already talked about this motion offense. There is no equal to the NFL and the women's side, Smitty. And and, mm. and we got to stop defending that side of this thing. I, I know Matt's going to come on. 
There is no equal to NFL football. And this is an NFL discussion. We talked about Division I today because I asked this lady last night. I said, ma'am, I'll be honest with you. I see your pictures on your profile. You have a boy that plays high school football. I said, you're seriously going to come on here and tell me that you want a woman to coach your boy and raise him into a man. Please stop it. I'm just being truthful. And then she didn't respond, dog. And I listen, there's not a sport on this earth. Men play basketball. We coach women's basketball. Gino Ariyama arguably has been the best women's basketball coach of all time. Right. Okay. So men play volleyball. They coach women's volleyball. Men play rugby. They coach women's rugby. If you ask those women, which I have been doing, they will tell you they want a man coaching them. Why, though? Because it's the they want because a, a man. man can't teach a woman how to be a woman, though. Like to your, to your they, same they point, your same argument. That, huh? Well, I, real quick, I would have said to your same point, a man can't teach a woman how to be a mother or how to be a woman. Like they might be a hell of a coach because, they, of course, they played the sport. I get that point. But to your larger point of like, well, a woman can't teach a man how to be a man. A man can't teach a woman how to be a woman either. So like to, to well, that that's point, discussion though. We're not, we're not, co that's not the discussion though. The discussion is not like a godly act. It's about a sport that we have hands on experience playing. Of course, we're not going to have a birth. We're not going to give birth to a, to a kid and talk about how. I know, but, but one of your arguments on the other side was that you just said it to that parent, to that mother who has a high school football player. You said you want a, a woman teaching your son how to be a man. So I'm like, okay, well, to that same point that you made, a man can't teach a woman how to be a woman. So my question no, is, the woman should, Smitty, the mama, the mama that just gave me my kid is teaching that woman. I'm the, her coach. I'm her volleyball coach. You're the mom of the woman. You're teaching her at home how to be a woman. You're the mom. So, so, we're, so we're assuming that every single daughter is just uh, their mama's in their life. Is that what no, we're assuming? We're, not, we're missing a whole. Well, that would be even easier argument for me if it was just a single dad raising her like I did. So like, That's what I'm saying. it's an easier like, argument to me. But I'm just saying the woman is at home with the woman, with the girl, raising that girl as a single mother. Let's just say single mother. And the and a man is coaching her outside activities, volleyball, based softball, uh, swimming, whatever. There's no there's no correlation. It's not like a man who's being raised by a woman at home now goes and gets coached by a woman. What? Come on, man! You guys are killing me with these fucking square holes and round pegs you're trying to force into this thing. It is not an equ equal world we're living in. I'm just being honest. I. We could talk about this all day. Matt will be on. I'm sure we'll discuss it again with it's Steve. A it's just a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Because I, I got other. It's a lot. It's a lot. I, yeah, I, it is. We could talk about it. It's everything. Um, but let's talk about NFL free agency because I want to get into a lot of it today. Uh, Calvin Ridley signed with the Titan Smitty. Good deal or not? That's a lot of money, man. $50 million guaranteed. And, I mean, he's. I mean, when you talk to other NFL receivers, they love Calvin Ridley in terms of like, what the footage shows in terms of route running ability, you know, he has all the skill set in the world. My biggest question is who's going to throw him the ball? I don't know. Like has, has Tennessee actually put their foot forward, put the step forward and said, Hey, this is going to be our quarterback. Cause I don't know. Is it Malik? Is it, is it buddy from Kentucky? Is there, are they drafting somebody else? Like, I don't know who their quarterback is going to be. So that's my, that's my bigger concern there. Um, really good player but it's a dependent position. You're going into a rebuild type of situation and team. I just feel like that money could have been spread out a little bit better as far as getting other pieces there. But good player, so, good, good for Calvin Ridley, though, for sure. They got questionable QB situation, as you mentioned. Not a, great Levis, sporting yeah. cast. Um, not a great sporting cast. New head coach. Um, not sure if I love it either. Um, but this signing is further proof that it's all about the bag, Smitty. Because I'm going to be honest. Back in the day, Cats went to places to win at this stage in their career. He will be 30 years old this year. Mm -hmm. He's on the other side of his career. Let's keep it real. Having said that, love that he got the money at this point in his career as well. Yeah. But cats at 30 used to chase rings, not bags. And he's also had off the field issues and all that bullshit. So they did sign Mason Rudolph, I believe. Did they get him too? I'm going to look it up. 
Yeah. Yep. Mason Rudolph, 16 hours ago. Yeah, the Rudolph, he'll be there with uh, Will Levis. Um, yeah. It'll probably be Will Levis as their, as their starter, I'm assuming. You know, and he's solid, but I mean, shit, you would think Trevor, Trevor Lawrence is better than Will Levis at this point in his career. And Cal really didn't do so. I mean, he had like over a thousand yards, but yeah, barely. He didn't really ball out last year with Trevor Lawrence. But it, this is what, if you're noticing like the teams and then the, the players that are leaving and they're going to places, they're just going to whoever, wherever for the biggest bag. Like you see good players and guys that have an opportunity that you would think wants to win a, wor- a world championship. They're going to these teams that are start up, start overs. I mean, you got to go where you want it. You do got to go where the money makes sense. And a lot of time, if you're a Super Bowl-ready team, that means they already have certain pieces in place where they can't afford you. And I don't think an NFL player of his stat of his status should just take a, a discount. Like, that's stupid to me. NFL stands for not for long. You, you are lucky to play 10 years. You play 10 years, you are an outlier. So you got to make as much money as you possibly can. Now, along that journey, you want to win. And if you can do both, if you can win and make a lot of money, perfect. But a lot of times you can't do both. So as a player, you got to be selfish, JB, because once that shit is over and it will be over, you will never make that same amount of money again. Never. Um, Eagles and Falcons accused of tampering, Smitty. Uh, these These are two interesting ones. Yeah. This one's very interesting. Kirk Cousins uh, admitted to having direct contact with the training staff during the negotiating period, which is tampering per NBC. And then this one I find very ironic. Uh, I know James very well. James Franklin, that is. He said, I don't know who he said to, that the Eagles general manager, Howie Roseman, spoke directly to Saquon Barkley during the negotiating period, which is tampering. It is likely that the NFL will investigate both of these. I'm trying to figure out why my man's dry snitched on him. I, I I don't know why James Franklin's involved, and he's coming back home to Pennsylvania, where Saquon happens to be from, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played at Penn State. And yeah. then he played at Penn State in the same state. Why are you telling on this motherfucker if it did happen? I don't know. Did it, I wonder if he, like, loosely kind of slip up and, like, said something on accident. Like he was just talking and just kind of like said it loosely. I don't. I don't think Jay Franklin would just snitch. I, I don't know. It's shit crazy. It's, uh, your man's. it's wild. It's uh, your generation too. Yeah, my generation. Uh, we don't snitch in my generation. You the biggest snitching group I've we seen. Don't, we don't snitch in my generation. Uh, I I don't know where this is going. I I think they can't just say reneg can't go there i nah. think what they'll do is they'll take your draft picks away though yeah from Who this cares? year this year i think it won't it won't it won't matter it won't matter these teams yeah. are trying to win right now so as long as they let the trade go all the way through kirk is gonna be in atlanta saquon gonna be in philly that's all that matters man you worry about draft pick later on you know what i'm saying so yeah uh, um it's, it's very it's interesting though for sure to say the least the Raiders free up space, releasing Jimmy G and Hunter Renfro, saving about nineteen million in cap. Um, can you see the Raiders before we get into the sec? The next uh, question, we're giving you a little segue, a little preemptive strike here, um, basically saying that Mike Williams was released from the Chargers as well. So I'm going back to my Raiders point. Letting Renfro go, saving 19 million cap. Do you think that the Raiders could go after a Mike Williams or even a Keenan Allen, who I'm hearing is not secure yet in the LA either? He ain't secure. Keenan Allen ain't secure. No, they're saying that he could be also let go. Damn. I mean, yeah, you definitely got to go over Mike Williams. I mean, listen, we understand he gets injured all the time, but when he's healthy, he's a playmaker, big playmaker too. You know, over the top. You know what I'm saying? He he can catch those uh, contested. Catches with the best with the best of them, to me, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? He's got to stay healthy. But I think right now the Raiders are obviously trying to build up a team that can actually contend. They've made some good moves already. I think adding a Mike Williams to Raider Nation will be huge. You know what I'm saying? So, um, And you, you want to be able to put as many good veteran weapons around your young quarterback in Aiden O'Connell. So why not go after a Mike Williams? And you could probably get him for pretty – I would say pretty cheap right now. I mean, not cheap, but not – at the highest rate because of the injury bug. I wouldn't touch Mike Williams with a 10-foot pole. Not even with, like, a good deal? If you get, like, a good deal on him? Nah. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't worth the uh, potential? Hasn't played in three years. 
Like, let's be honest. He hadn't played in three years. Well, he ain't played a full season. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, played. Why would you risk like money that. on this dude? Like, let's be clear as a coach. You get you, you recruit guys to be a part of your offense. I recruit certain t- players. I recruit a 5'11", six-foot slot to be a shifty slot guy, and I'll take a guy smaller. But on the outside, I'm looking for 6'5", 6'4", 6'3", guys to fit my scheme. I'm not signing Mike Williams to fit my scheme only to lose him week three, and now my scheme changes. Now I get fired because that's what happens when you go all in on certain things. You build your teams around guys you want. Like, I don't believe NFL sit there and like, all right, the best on the board. Let's go with, like, they're picking guys to fit their system. So why would I take a guy that I don't know if he's going to be available after three weeks into the season? Like, he's a guy that's been hurt every single year three weeks in. Like, this guy don't play enough games to me. To for me to pay him anything, I wouldn't give him a score to piss. So that's just what I'm trying to equate. Like you got to build your team around guys you draft, you re, you, you get a free agency, etc. I I just can't sign a guy that's going to be an intricate part of my offense, especially it's a dick tease when I'm in three weeks in and we're ripping the offense and league leading the offense and in, in, in total yards and Mike Williams has ten touchdowns and fucking we look like world beaters and then bam, the motherfucker's gone for the year. Yeah, like that's a, just a, a risk I can't take at this stage. It's not like he's twenty one, so I don't know. That's my well, take. I think at the right price, I bring him in. I'm not gonna spend like a whole bunch of money on him, but the right price, I'll bring him. He's still a veteran guy, yeah. guy who can give you, you know, at worst a few games. But yeah, I think you gotta kind of hedge your bet and have a young guy ready to go. And they say twenty mil on him. him. I, like I, I'm not touching him. And, and, and you know, the other part is like. If you ask me right now, hell yeah, hell no, nah, I would take Mike Williams over OBJ. I don't know if I could answer that. Like, those two are the same guy to me. Mm. Totally different players, but the same guy. I don't know if this guy's going to play. I don't know if he's durable. I don't have a clue. I, I, I don't know if I could do it. Um, speaking of that, Chargers released Mike Williams, of course, and they kept Khalil Mack. They saved $20 million in cap. And Keenan Allen could be next, I'm hearing, which would shock me. I'm pretty sure uh, Harbaugh would try to keep him. But the Chargers have four of the top 12 cap hits in the entire NFL. Khalil Mack, Bosa, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams. Look at that. So that's why Keenan Allen is considered. They just re up Khalil Mack, but they restructured his deal from everything I heard. He, they restructured Khalil Mack's deal so they could fit that in more friendly, cap-friendly um, – space so they're doing some things i'm sure harbaugh's going in there it's like listen we might have to cut some dead weight i don't know keenan allen's also older now shit been in the league what 11 not like like, i mean him and mike evans i think are the same yeah no he's been in the league for a minute he ain't young but he's still he's still balling out though you know at the same time no no doubt about it but i'm just saying like you, you go to 32 mil um Smitty, Jerry Jones has yet another case thrown out in court. This one's interesting, though. Uh, Another one, by the way. How many can you get accused of? But anyway, defamation suit against uh, Jerry Jones is out of federal court, been thrown out. And I just got to tie this together. If you haven't heard, Dak Prescott just got sued for the R word or a sexual assault. Yeah, Dak Prescott just got accused of sexual assault. And the attorney for the defendant in this Dak Prescott extortion case um, is an interesting story. And I don't know if you've heard this one. Listen to this shit. He has got a text message who, which got thrown out on in, into the universe, in the stratosphere. Bailey, right here. The attorney for the victim, apparent victim, in this case against Dak, his name is Yol Zahahi. That's a text out there, and it says, as an objective Cowboy fan, I hate delusional Cowboy fans like Dave who don't hold Dak accountable. Dude is garbage, point blank, period. 
This is the attorney for the accuser versus Dak. <laughs> it was like, how old was that tweet? I couldn't tell. I mean, I saw it at 21 weeks on a screenshot, but I couldn't tell that matter. was like 15 years ago when he was a kid, or is that like not 15? It, it really don't little, matter. You know though. I mean? Yeah, Damn. to me, it don't matter. Like you have a it's a conflict of interest already, and it that should be used by Dak's attorney. And bam, I'd be out of there. Like, I'd, I'd be like, nah, you can't defend him. You already don't like me. Fuck you. Like, right. where's the proof? I'm trying to figure out how the law is still allowing women um, to file or accuse without actually having a rape kit performed and actually having a DNA swab and all these other things. I find it crazy how that can happen. And it's happening every day. It happens every single day. And I'm just like, damn, I don't understand how that occurs. Like, you should have a kit done, and it should say, you guys at least had encounter. Mm. That's a kit that does, we can have the encounter. Um, and then go from there. We're just accusing it, and it's filed, it's charged, and it's like, damn. I, I just think fake accusations should face the the limit of the law, I think, should be thrown at these kids or these girls. That's just my personal opinion. They lying. If they, yeah, if, you, if it comes out that they lying, oh, yeah, I, I have zero sympathy for them. I, I know. Listen, I know it happens, too, and there's shit birds, and you know I'm on record. These fucking – any man that touches a woman or assaults a woman or is man, absolutely they, castrated. Goes without question. So they should be decide. Fucking, the man did it, no sympathy at all, put him under the jail they, forever, they whatever. Be, Put on this show live. We put them out in Times Square and blah, blah, blah. So here's the thing. the woman is lying, I don't know sympathy. So, like, it's, it's, it's extreme either way for me. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it is. And here's the thing about it, though. Like, I've defended my players. I've had to defend my players and go through a deep dive investigation on what happened in the dorm. And that's why I didn't let women in my kids' dorms. You go to their dorm. Mm. Don't let them come to your place. There's a huge difference, Smitty, in a, in, a, in, a, in a co-ed dorm room, just to be clear. Really? Hell yeah. You invited the girl over, and what? I took it? I feel like because my the way my brain works is like if she came to your dorm, that's proof that like she on her own came to your room. Nah, you know why? Why? I go to your dorm. You're telling me that I forced entry? Show me. Prove it. I didn't force entry. You invited me to your room. Mm. You invited me to your room. It's a cordial act. You invited me over, Smitty. See, I got I to gotta hip y'all the game. Y'all can't just let girls in your dorms in college. You got to go to their house as the man. It shows intent, proof, invite, invitation. Everyone comes over to my house. We're having a party, Smitty, and shit go crazy. It's at my place. That's true. So I'm point. just telling That's you, this is a deep dive when you raise these these young kids when men should be coaching men. Um, but that's <laughs> what you have to do. You think a woman would teach that to their boy? <laughs> anyway, um, so look, let me let me let me dive into uh let me dive into another part of this. So now you got Dak now with another fucking off-season issue in D-Town. Dallas always has something, Smitty. I'm always so tired. I'm tired of defending these cats. I'm tired of everybody defending Dallas. And this is the year. And blah, 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 blah. No, it's not the year. It's never the year. You have a faulty owner. You have a mid-QB. And you always have drama. Now, I listen, I know people that know Dak. That would... That would absolutely shock my brain. That yeah. that that's a real thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I'm think. Sure that, I don't think it happened. That'd like, be done. I'm much more week. confident that he, Dak didn't do shit than Deshaun Watson, and I and then I don't know either of them. But I just again off my recruiting vibes and relationship building and character evaluation, I'm taking Dak uh, in the character department over Deshaun. Now, right. having said that, you never know, Smitty. I've had great kids. You think they're, we call them fake ass good boys. They'll fucking tell you everything. And you know, they'll fucking go out and rob McDonald's tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I don't trust them. That's the one thing. Don't ever fucking trust them. You said that yesterday on Smitty says so. Don't give a fuck. Nobody cares. 
Nobody oh, cares when you and your mom are in the car and the ambulance is in behind you and you have to pull over for it and it drives by. You don't sit there and pause and have a prayer moment and say, damn, let's pray for the person in the back of that thing. No, you literally pull behind the motherfucker and try to get where you're going. You don't yeah. care about who's in the ambulance and what, who it could be. and it all. Nobody cares. Nobody cares until you're six feet deep. That's a fact. And everybody want to be like, dang, man, JB was a good dude. He was so oh, yeah. good coach, man. I remember, yeah, I remember yeah, he did this. But they ain't going to hit you up right now with the opportunity and talk to you now oh. and try to, like, they going to wait till you dead and try to give you a flower because it's popular at that time, right? It's popular to get to talk, show love to somebody when they gone. T's and P's on Twitter. T's and P's. That's a fucking joke. I don't want no T's and P's when I pass. Everybody got post pictures and shit here. showing that they know you, JB. Like, people love yeah, to know. It's a clout. It's a clout thing. Uh, you know what they'll do? You know what they do now? They take a picture. Yeah. That they took with you in fucking McDonald's parking lot like they are your boy. Right. And they took a picture. Oh, I knew JP. I took no, you didn't, motherfucker. You, I, I fucking met you at McDonald's and I took a picture with you. Right. Shut up. I'll, like, I'll never forget this moment, man. Our last moment yeah. together. Like, you see bro. all the time. These motherfuckers posting shit like. Like, I posted shit with people that I actually had a relationship with that have passed away. Like, <laughs> like I posted a video because I was just with. Um. What's it? My, my man, uh, Debo. I was yeah. just with Debo. And for two straight days, I've been around him for like two straight years. And we actually used to clown, talk shit. We actually would text each other. We had a relationship to, that was cordial. And we, we saw each other. We knew each other, blah, blah. I was just with the motherfucker the day before he died. Mm. And then I, so I posted a video with me and him at the big three. And, you know, I felt kind of shitty doing that, but it was like. But it's different, though. You grew up with him. Like, that's a whole nother thing. Like, I, it's just I, like. That's I, like me and Sheldon and knock on wood. Something happens to me and he posts me like we grew up together, like nine years old. Like, that's a whole nother situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me, me and you, me and you, like something happened to me. Like, you could post me. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you permission. If something happened to Big Smitty, y'all, JB could post a picture of me and him. At Yard House when we first met up to start this podcast, and like he can post that picture. I, I give him permission. You know and you know the crazy part is Tiny Lister, Compton native, yeah, uh go. grew up on the same street I grew up on. Um Zeus, we call him Zeus, obviously. You all know him as Debo. Um, a lot of cats don't know from Compton. So many people, people don't realize they're from Compton, but anyway, uh that was crazy to me how when he just passed away. You know that cat's been in like 200 movies? It's crazy. I mean, you know, people don't know that because he's always been in some sort of role, but he's been in over 200 movies. Um. Anyway, I don't know. Dallas Smitty is just another uh, shit show. Uh, I'll be honest. It is what it is. Um, let's go to our main man, <clears throat> um, Boulder's finest, 6-0 Academy's finest. Big Matt McChesney, and then we'll take a break, Smitty, before uh, Steve and Sean King come on. Sounds good. Uh, Pop it up for Big Matt, man. Matt McChesney on the Thursday. What up, people? Special appearance. Uh, what's good? We're on TikTok. We're on everything, Big Matt. Uh, what's good, Matt? Uh, I saw you working out your kid. I know you had some personal shit going on yesterday. I've been there, done that. If nobody knows, they don't need to know. But trust me, that is an absolute fucking shit show. Yeah, and I've been there, done that. It's absolute. It's a venom spitting day, and I'm doing it in honor of Matt. Um, I appreciate you. Oh, it's tough. I know all about it. Um, so I posted. You posted your. Uh, is that? I think it was your son doing a bag drill and the cones and the and the and the lateral hip moves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that your son? Yeah, the big one. Yep. And he's the one being recruited. Yeah, he's the eighth grader. Fucking eighth grader. Eighth grader. Um, six, six three and a half, two sixty. And an eighth grader. That's and like and like competing with all the high school kids and like, you know, first in line, busting his like he Davis Moon is another young guy that's same on the same trajectory. It's really those the guys that start young, bro, they blow up in that in that place. They're Drake Nugents. You know, those are the guys who, you know, once they get on that that path. It's hard to get them off because they see, you know, how successful they are. They're working their balls off, 
And I treat him like everybody else. Like I'm real hard on his ass because he told me he wants it. So, you know, I don't push him because I want it. He wants to play. But my little one wants to be a, a, a fighter. So we've got all of our eggs in that basket. So like a boxer or, or, or MMA? Like, like box, MMA, jujitsu. He doesn't know. He just wants to whip someone's ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not surprised because I know I know their pop. So fighting yeah, and in the, football makes sense. <laughs> the big one, the big one has already been invited to Kansas State's junior day. We're going to Oklahoma to see Beaten by. Uh let's see. Uh George has already reached out with Uzo Deribe down there. The, the outside linebacker coach is a good friend. Like we're just trying to build bridges for big man and see what happens. Damn. Hey, you uh I want to ask you a question, uh, coaching, father, trainer, all yeah. in one. Um, you put your kid at eighth grade, or, or or when did he start on the weights versus doing all the agility and the dynamic stuff? Did you do more dynamic stuff to start? Would uh, you do that? Would you advise that over weights as, uh, from 10 to 15? I would say that's the maturity level of the kids. Some some kids are just underdeveloped, but body weight will never let you down. Like I start everybody on anchor ropes, sledgehammers, tire flips, body weight, like th functional movements, and then running the ladder and learning how to control your feet on those different motions. Opening up your hips. I know the hip drill, everybody freaks out on the hip drill because I'm talking shit and they love it. But it's a functional drill for pass rushers and for pretty much everybody on the field. Can you separate your upper and your lower body? You know, or, or are you a Lego character? If you're a Lego character, it's going to be pretty hard to play football. So everything we do is functional. The footwork, the applying, like my, my brother's an MMA trainer, fighter, boxer, you know, like he does all of it. Mm. He trains a bunch of guys. So my son see him. All the We try and get everybody in front of – Functional movement off the inside of your foot uh, to really, you know, take advantage of the fact that we're all lateral athletes. Like everybody, if you're playing a sport, you're a lateral athlete. Push off the inside of your feet and be successful in that regard. And I'm telling you, man, the, the guys that start young, it's so awesome to see them take off. And then controversially, we've got guys that start old, like junior seniors. And it's, you can tell. Like it's, you can tell there's tension. You can tell that they don't have enough time in their own head. Like two B seniors that sign up that are like, have a lot of potential. They are so rushed by the world because they didn't take advantage of the three or four years they had in front, like in front of them in the past. They just, they waited. So, you know, it's take advantage of when you're young, man, if you can play or you have the potential or you're just gifted with size or whatever your reasoning the younger you can start, the better. And there's no such thing as overtraining, okay? There's a lack of diversification in how you train, but you're never going to, like, you can do 100 push-ups every day. You're not going to, like, it's not going to wear you out or break you. Like, be real weary of people telling you what not to do. Like, you can always find something to do from a physical standpoint to get yourself right for the day. Hey, Matt, I want to dive into – uh free agency with you real quick. Uh, and I want to go through the list of every team. I, I did a whole deep dive yesterday and spent the fucking day after our show ended on getting everybody who signed with every team. Good, I want to do like a grade, grade out type of deal, but I don't need to mention everyone. Cause I doubt it's hard. It's probably hard to pull up uh, for Bailey, but I'll, I just want to go through commanders real quick. I'll just go through the teams and maybe we'll do half today, half tomorrow. I don't know if Matt, you on tomorrow too. Yes, sir. Uh, Commanders signed Austin Eckler. We know that was a big get. I like the Bobby Wagner signing because I think even though he's a little bit older on the other side of his career, I would assume I still like the leadership, and he still gets 100-plus tackles a year everywhere he's been. They also got Frankie Louvu, another backer, and then they got the center, Tyler um, – what's his name, Badaz? Yeah, Badaz. They, they took him from, uh, from Dallas. Dallas. And then they got Zach Ertz. They got three D linemen, um, which I think – and then they got a guard in Nick Allegretti. Um, so the, if you just saw those real quick, and then they they did a whole bunch of other things. They got Marcus Mariota, of course. Jeremy Chin like, is a good get. Jeremy Chin at safety is a good get. Um, you from they my got hood. a long snapper and a kicker. All right. So uh, where are you at with that th so far through three days? I mean, I, I'm weary of the 
winning the free agency Super Bowl. You know, I, 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 I'm. It makes me after the monstrosity that happened in Denver with Russ and like the old. Remember the Super Team in Philly back in the day with Vince Young and all those guys. Like it, usually, it doesn't really work out that well. Now that said. I also watched the Broncos sign Peyton Manning and then sign Demarcus Ware and Akeem Tlaib and Ward and all these other fucking freaks and win Super Bowl and go to another one. So it it, it cuts both ways, as we know. Um, yeah, to I, your I, point, the, I, the, I, the I, Cowboys I, haven't done shit and everyone's all in up in arms, but they 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 have a roster that's pretty loaded. I don't know how much they have to do. Well, that's the thing is, it's how how. How comfortable are you with letting your homegrown talent you developed leave? If I was Dallas, if I was the Broncos, you know, not getting off the commanders, but whatever, I, I'm i more concerned about signing my own players. Like the Broncos lost Cushenberry. Well, there's a pattern. You draft Lloyd after he wins the natty. You develop him into a really good center. He wasn't a pro ball or anything yet, but he's on that path. And then he gets ten million plus from Tennessee, rather than Denver resigning him. Well, the the guy that they drafted to play center before him, Connor McGovern, they did the same thing. They drafted him in the fourth or fifth round. They they developed him and played him for five years, and then they let him leave on a free agency deal. So you do you develop the shit out of somebody, you turn them into a great pro. At that position, the the middle of the offensive line where you can really build around it, where they had a guy here in, in Denver named Tom Nalen who played forever, and it, instead of building around that position, you just let them leave and replace it with the young guy. And you know what? Maybe maybe that works, but it, it also hasn't. So right. Dallas is the same thing. You should be more more interested in resigning your own people rather than letting them go to a rival. So it's. It, it, but at the same time, if someone's not getting re-signed, there's a reason on one side of the fence. And if they are getting signed on the other side, there's a reason on that side of the fence. So free agency, you're you're right until you're wrong in this game, bro, because everything right now looks good until you get on the field and it maybe doesn't click. Like the, the Derrick Henry thing, I am so excited to watch it. But if it goes south, like that, that's it, it could easily happen. And I'm not saying that because Derek's a bad player or the Ravens don't fit their scheme or whatever. Lamar Jackson's been their leading rusher for the last five years. It's hard to break that from a from a from a scheme perspective when they've been doing it so well for so long. Are they going to be able to hand the ball to Derek more than Lamar runs? I I mean I, I'd like to think so, yes, but we'll, we'll see. I, I don't like that signing at all. I'm the one that gets it, but we'll dive. We're gonna dive into that. Let me ask you this: Speaking of the Cowboys staying on there, Orlovsky went on Dan Patrick yesterday and said that last year the Cowboys should have blown it up. They should have fired McCarthy. They should have got rid of Dak, and they should have blown the whole thing up because now they are in. Now they're obligated and they're they're kind of hamstrung with what they have. Um, and now Dak's on another renegotiating uh, another contract. Um, agree or disagree with that? Um, uh -oh. I mean, what they're twelve win team back to back, right? They thirteen. Thir I think it was thirteen. 15, if I'm mistaken. Ah, man, I don't know if I'd be blowing up a thirteen win team. They just need to figure out how to get over the hump in the playoffs. So, uh, look, thirty years. But yeah, it's been a long fucking time. That's for damn sure. I mean. It's been so long, all right? Bro, it has been so long that my son wrote a paper in his class talking shit about how irrelevant the fucking Cowboys are. Two seconds. Uh -oh, yeah, Two seconds. Uh, Don't wait. Don't as Matt grabs that, the Bills. Don't go anywhere! The Bulls, the Bills, not the Bulls, the Bills signed Mitchell Trubisky again. Uh... Listen to this from Nick McChesney. <clears throat> no bullshit about your Dallas Cowboys, Skip Bayless. The Dallas Cowboys have been fraud since 95. <laughs> How old is he? The Cowboys are a team in the National Football League, but you wouldn't know. How old's your kid? He's 14. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> oh man, he was born what? He's born like what? Oh, oh eight. Yeah, they're a must watch in the playoffs for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> so, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You got 13 year olds that have never seen them do anything to just hear how bad their organization is. Just talking shit, dude. I love it. I don't know. Maybe they should blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> now that you think about it, huh? Uh, all right. So moving on with the Bills. This is a team I'm kind of not concerned with. I really don't give a fuck either way. I don't have a dog in the fight, but they got <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky to back up uh, Allen. They get old, t- old tackle Deion Dawkins, a three year, $60 million deal. They got a guard named Dave, David Edwards. Um, and then they got a D tackle, Dequan Jones. We know about him. They got linebacker and Nicholas Bar- Morrow. They got a corner, Cam Lewis. They signed Taylor Rapp, um, safety. Uh, and then they got A.J. Espensa, who's uh, an edge guy. Both uh, of their guys, they just re-signed. Like, they didn't they really- re-signed. They re-signed two of those guys, Cam Lewis and Taylor Rapp, I believe, and Daquan Jones, right? Yeah, um, Daquan, AJ. I gotta, I gotta ask you, they haven't done much in free agency besides Trubisky, and they got, I think, Deion Dawkins. Well, Deion been there, so they just re-signed. Oh, I said, re-signed. Most of the guys you listen just got re-signed. They don't have anybody new besides Trubisky and – is that it? I think that's it. <laughs> so that's or, No, you- Morrow. I mean Morrow. Okay, so let me ask you, Matt. They got rid of Gabe Davis, who've made more – crunch time catches than their star yeah. digs mm. and they have got rid of McKenzie who's another slot guy that 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 I think Allen likes a lot that he can get as a release valve um a little shifty cat that he can get a ball out to on a bubble or a now or a smoke how are they replacing the receiving core there and how are they going to continue to take off pressure? Cause right now it looks like they're adding more pressure to Josh Allen, who already is 90% of the offense. Cause they don't run the football unless it's him. Uh, what is Buffalo going to do? Are they kind of conceding or are they going to do something special here? Cause I don't know who's out there. They got T Higgins is out there. I don't think they can go get, I don't think they can go to Minnesota and go grab Justin Jefferson. I don't think they have it a capital. Who are they going to get to help Josh Allen? They bank it on the draft. I mean, they're going to have to, bro. The losing Gabe Davis, they lost. They lost Morris too. They've got standing center. They lost Jordan Poyer, Pryor, who Poyer, yeah, Poyer. Excuse me. That guy is a monster of safety. He's a great player. I mean, where he lacks and gets beat sometimes in the passing game, he makes up for it with his ferocity and you know coming downhill and and really putting it on a, a ball carrier and he's a great leader back there. Uh, look, I don't, I don't know how they're going to just replace all these cats, but, but they do do a good job of manipulating the, the salary cap and making sure they, you know, turn some of the salaries into bonuses. And they've done that successfully in the past. They're re-signing their pass rushers. We just talked about teams re-signing their own guys rather than letting them leave. You know, Morris, the the center, already went to Jacksonville. You can tell when good players get cut, they're immediately, you know, bam, they're gone. Justin Simmons is still on the on the on the uh, free agent docket. They might want to look about kicking those tires if you're trying to replace the safety. But I, I'm not saying that. Look, the, yes, we're trying to help Josh Allen in, on offense, but I think they should really fortify their defense. They try to do it with Von Miller. They're trying to do it with AJ's resigning. But if they can figure out how to, you know, make one or two more big plays on defense to get Josh Allen the ball, which he gives away, I think that's going to be the the fit in Buffalo moving forward here rather than just how can we get him another receiver? How can we get him another? I think Kincaid and Knox, I think what they're trying to do here in Buffalo is kind of replicate the Tom Brady model a little bit mm. where you've got, you've got a pretty good receiver and then a bunch of guys but you've got Kincaid and Knox and they can kind of mimic the, you know, Gronk and whomever else is rotating in there with Gronk at, at the tight end position to be elite. So, you know, the middle of the football field for Buffalo needs to be exploited more than, than the hash to the numbers uh, with Josh Allen. And I, I, I'd like to think that that's the, the route they're going to go. I think they found a running game last year with Cook as well. So, they they can build off of this moving forward, but it's just a question of will they. Remember, they uh, hired their OC in the middle of the season last year. 
we only got you for about eight more minutes, so I got to ask you. Let's, just, let's let's jump around these teams real quick. Uh, I want to get your take on. Uh, by the way, I, I really seriously don't think that's Malik Henry in the chat, people. I think I would fucking know if it was Malik Henry. Not Malik. Is that not really Malik Henry? No, he's fuck no. He's in Canada. No shit. I, I talked to him yesterday. Henry, yeah, no shit. Uh, Miami. I want to go to Miami. I think we first started off, they lost everybody on defense, and we went after Mike McDaniel, and I said he's not a serious guy because the bottom line is he – he he's an offensive guy who's really this is his second year, third year entering being a head coach. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if he realizes defense wins championships in this league. And he let a shitload of talent go, right? And I and I get it. I'm not there, so I don't know the numbers in the books. Um they have quietly though become a winner in free agency, in my opinion, just over the last 24 to 48 hours. They re-signed Robert Jones to the tackle. Joe New Smith, they got on a two-year, ten million dollar deal. I don't know how that fits Tua, but we'll see. They got uh, center Aaron Brewer. Um, they got Shaq Barrett, uh, Jordan Brooks. I thought was a huge get. They got Anthony Walker uh, on a one-year deal, and then they got Jordan Poyer, as you mentioned. Wow. And then they got a a, a one-year c- contract with Siren Neal, a, cor- a, a nickel safety corner, and then they got Nick Needham, uh, another. Resign him as a free agent deal, another corner. So they made a couple moves here um, in the last few hours and days uh, that I thought climbed back in the mix. Uh, Do you think Michael Daniels now is serious coach? Do you are you going back now a little bit? Nah, I think the GM told him you better get some fucking defensive guys in here. You just lost them all. So hold on, so, so hold on. When, when he when he, when he loses guys, it's his fault. When he loses guys, it's his fault. He's not serious. When he brings in guys, the GM, so he can't win for losing. <laughs> Fuck no. Hey, <laughs> hey, Matt. I don't believe that. Besides Jordan Brooks, let's be honest. Jordan Brooks and Poyer, we, we you agreed. I think they have flaws, both of them, but they are good gets. They're not. I don't believe they replace what they lost, Mitty. Do you? Time will tell. I mean, they, they got Shaq Barrett. He's, he's they awesome lost player. Xavier Howard. Xavier Howard is a baller, dog. Uh, nah, I, I, could, I wouldn't have lost him. I, I wouldn't have lost him. That, that's going to be one that hurts, especially next to Ramsey. Like, if you can figure out how to motivate those two to play together, that could be an ex- incredibly dynamic duo at corner. So you've got to think maybe Howard didn't like having another, you know, Dude in the room who's at the same level as him. Was, Matt, Matt, they lost the Wilkins Raiders. in the trench to the Raiders. Wilkins is a huge loss. That's, Wilkins, that's, that's, that's a big that's, loss. That's, you can't double. You can't double team Baba Yaga anymore. Oh, oh, oh shit! That's what I'm saying. Man, you, put, you put Wilkins and Max Crosby in an under front with backside isolated three and five, and they're on the right guard, right tackle have to block them both one on one. Dog. These quarterbacks, you better get rid of that football, homie. That that quarterback, Chris. Uh, now I've seen Wilkins take his thumb and woo. You've I've seen it. Like he, that's he's. Oh, Vegas is weird, dog. Wilkins loves that, but he's gonna love it. It's gonna be dope. Hey, uh, let me ask you this. I want to go to a couple sneaky teams that no one's talking about because I think everyone shitted on a, a few of these guys right out the gate. Um, and I and I wanted to get into uh the. The, the New York teams, the Jets and the Giants. The Jets uh, went out and got some O-linemen. Uh, Morgan Moses from the Ravens, and I think they got John Simpson. Um, help out Aaron Rodgers if he doesn't run for vice president of the country. Now, having said that, um, the Giants, who everyone's been shitting on, I thought they, in the last few days, have become one of the best off free agent off seasons of all of them. And I was like, damn, I just saw what they did. And recently they got Drew Locke as a quarterback. All right, whatever. But they got Devin Singletary, Isaiah McKenzie. And then they went out and got Jermaine Ulamonar or whatever his name is, the O-lineman, O-tackle. And they got John Runyon, who's going to be on our show next week, Junior, yeah. um, who had a good year in, in Green Bay the last few years. And then they got Brian Burns. Now he, he's a hell of a pass rusher. Yeah, I mean, I thought the Giants stepped their game up in the last few days and got Singletary and McKenzie and and getting that tackle and the guard. And and I'm hearing they're trying to shop Daniel Jones. I don't know. Now they lost Saquon. We get it. I like Singletary though. Um, I don't know where you I at mean, with the they, Giants. 
Where, I'm not going to compare the two. I'm just saying. Yeah, where, it's just hard. Sensei is cool. But at least you got Saquon, somebody. So like, it's hard to really say that they improve when you're not saying you improve, players. but I'm saying you're not naked. Yeah, you ain't naked. They cool, but I mean, it's hard. It's, when you're at the very bottom of the map, anything is gonna gonna improve you. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, they got better, but is it gonna lead to them making the playoffs and winning a playoff game and winning the NFC East? No, you know. So like, they got better, but it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, losing losing Saquon to Philly and the way it happened, and then Tiki's punk ass coming out and talking shit. And I know he doesn't work for the Giants, but I mean, indirectly, it's from the Giants. Fucking Tiki. You know, that, that guy, Tiki, is just what a turd that guy is. Matt, what's his, name? what's his name again, Matt? Tiki. 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 Oh, Tiki. Um, Tiki. I, I, look, man, the Giants, la- I have to wrap last year's monstrosity into this. I understand that they've gotten some good players, but when you prioritize Daniel Jones over Saquon Barkley, that is a flaw. And I understand they've done some good things, but I'm very interested to see how it works, how it works out. Like, they desperately need a quarterback. I would assume they're trying to draft one of these guys, right? Like, right? Right? You got 160 mil, though. That dead cap space is going to be humongous. I think 80 mil. I mean, unless that is what it is. Tommy it's all what Denver did with dead cap. Fuck dead cap. At the end of the day, that, that's, that money's spent. That money's already Fuck gone out the cap. pocket. Fuck a dead cap, as they say. Move on. Fuck it. You know, Daniel Jones money at it. Not that good of a player. I'm not gonna call him. I ain't gonna say what I was about to say. He's not that good a player. Who? They messed up. Move on. Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is, Daniel Jones is shitty. Yeah, I agree. He's Matt. You cool. home, Matt? Last week you, you know, got you got on me. You got on me last week when I called some. I called somebody shitty, or I said something. He was like, I don't feel comfortable. You know what I mean? T- saying guys are shitty. Who's playing at that level? Da, 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 da. Fuck you. When the fuck did I say that? I swear to God. Who better who, who, clip? JB, am I wrong? Yeah, JB. Yeah, he did say that, but I, I, I think it's a different context. Yeah, I think he was talking about that's guys cool. that actually that's make it to the league. That ain't cool. Trying to make me sound like a bitch. That ain't cool. I just- I already, I already sound like a bitch trying to fucking defend all the women in football. Ah! <laughs> Get on by JB and shit. Everybody in the comments like, this motherfucker, bro. Yeah, I don't think well, somebody could coach me in the trench, but the, the fuck. Well, since you brought it up, Mick, hey, man, I guess we'll go to that subject next. We don't have time. Um, But, okay, <laughs> let me ask you this. Speaking of Saquon to the Eagles, they're saying fuck it's tampering. <laughs> They're saying it's tampering. Oh, whatever. I mean, the tampering started at the beginning of the offseason. Right? That's what I said. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck, dog? It's a tampering. All right, Matt, before you get out of here, I got to ask you straight up real quick. I got to get it to this brass tax. You can ask me whatever you want. Nick Saban. uh, We talked off record. uh, Came out in the state senate on the floor. Um Bailey, I don't know if you have the, the tweet that I sent you of what I responded on, but he's taking a lot of heat. I This guy named Adam Gorney said, if this was all about developing players, Nick Saban would have stayed at Toledo. What? And I go, this may be the dumbest shit I've ever read. Maybe he wanted to coach elite talent and get them to the NFL as all coaches aspire to do at the highest level. Just a thought. Maybe the kid who commits to school A should honor that commitment and fight through some adversity before transferring to school B in the same year. Wow. Some folks should just stay in their lanes. All right. So anyway, Nick Saban's taking heat all over the place from all different angles, uh, media, all this shit about, I don't believe people are listening to what he said. He ain't saying don't pay the kids. He's saying, and I don't know what Matt thinks he's saying, the way we're doing it is allowing kids to control every narrative out there. And if we allowed our kids growing up, when we were growing up, we'd be dead or buried if we let them control the narrative of every yeah. single thing at 17 years old. They don't know what they don't know yet. So yeah. that's all Saban saying. We don't get to mature these kids. We don't get to grow these kids. We don't get to coach these kids or teach them, which is coaching. So where are you at with Nick Saban taking all this heat and – uh What's your thought on him leaving? And basically, we already knew why he left. Now he's basically saying it. Well, Bailey, you're going to need to clip this bad boy because this is about to be fire. Look, 
he's blatantly said he wants open revenue sharing with the players. So everybody, no one's clipping that part, which is ridiculous to me. Nick Saban said openly, we need revenue sharing with all of the players. That's huge. That's real money. That's real money with, with the television contracts. And, you know, like that's big time money right there. Now, what Nick Saban is saying is you've got unexperienced, uneducated about the circum stance that we're talking about parents and kids trying to negotiate handshake contracts with coaches now because the Congress said it's okay for them to talk about it. So the first thing Nick Saban, the great Nick Saban hears is how much are you going to pay me? It turns him off because it, it's, that's not what it's supposed to be about. It, there's a difference between having an agent and representation and a structure at the NFL level to go get paid. No player picks up the phone and calls the, unless you're Raquan Smith and you're, you're, you know, your own agent or it's Lamar Jackson's mother. No, no one's picking up the phone and calling the franchise and being like, this is what I want. They have their agent do it like that. And there's a standard and there's precedent from other contracts. There's none of that in college football. So all Coach Saban is saying is that, like, obviously there's tons of flaws in this. And when everything's just money motivated to start, that's usually not a very productive thing in the, in the ending. So how is it that people don't understand where he's coming from? Revenue sharing, that was what I heard. And then, look, the inability to understand how complex this is and just get angry about it. That's how I know you don't know. When I say to an individual, a parent, a kid, if I'm a college coach and I say to them, like, look, I, I'm i not really comfortable talking about that. I don't know how much money you're worth, blah, 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 blah. And the parents get pissed off about it and the kids get mad. Like, well, that just tells me that the frustration is leading you down this road rather than experience and actually being able to negotiate what you think you're worth. So, I'm not saying kids should kids shouldn't get paid. I'm all about them getting paid. But damn it, it's like the NCAA and college football did this on purpose so they can just have something to bitch about still. How is it that we can't have structure in this? You you want the kids to get paid but you won't let them have agents? You won't let college kids you want them to get paid but you don't have a union? You don't have anybody that can call to see if their contracts are good? Like there's no contracts? There's just handshakes? Like, what? come on now. I mean, you can't just expect everybody to know how to play the game because they watched a fucking YouTube video, dog. In the information age, ignorance is a choice, and goddamn, we're choosing to be stupid. I, I Before you leave here, though, I, I will give you my take on this thing. I think this is why we're getting, uh, 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 what I think, this is my personal opinion, a watered-down, what people, the kids say, mid-product in the NFL. Because we're paying guys in college to we're, – we're, we're offering bags of money to kids as sophomores, juniors, in, co- in high school. And these two stars, these one-star guys that should be going to Toledo, really think they should be getting a five-star bag to go to Alabama. Yeah. And we are watering it down at the ultimate level, which is high school. And now kids are going from from, let's say, one of your high schools there in Boulder – to go to another high school, uh, a better one, because they think they're going to get the Alabama scholarship and the money, the bag. When it's really, no, you're not. You're a two-star corner. You're going to go to Toledo at best. Probably you should go to JUCO, but you're going to go to, that's going to be killed also. So you're going to go to Toledo, but you don't believe so because you believe your homie that's a four-star got a big bag of money to go to Colorado. You think you're equal. You're not. And the bag of money has created an equal playing field in their brains, mm-hmm. and they think they're all equal, and that's allowing them to chase greener pastures when they do get to the four-year level. Now they're like, oh, fuck it. I'm not starting. What? I'm out. I'm going to fucking. So it's like, I don't know. And then you get that mindset, Matt. You go to the NFL, and now guess what? Oh, well, I don't like this. I want to demand a trade. We never used to demand a trade. Well, I mean, I've seen I've seen NFL pros demand trades back in the day, kinda. 
but never, I mean, a college kid. Kind of. They had to play their contract saying, out for the most part. Yeah, I mean, college kids walking in and saying, you either pay me or I'm going to the transfer portal. That's new. And look, I don't have a problem with leverage. I understand where I'm coming from. I'm all about leverage. I'm all about business. I'm all about negotiating. Again, let's go. Let's remember what I said. I have a problem with no players union. I have a problem with no real agents. I have a problem with the assumption that the parents and a football consigliere like me, I'm not, I don't know how to read contracts. Like, come on now. Like it, it has to be bigger than handshake deals. If everybody wants to talk about this, like it's professional, we need to act like we're professional. That's my point. And I agree with coach Saban that you're set. This is setting people up for failure. This isn't setting people up for success. Uh, the old model for all of its flaws, it relatively worked in developing men and turning them into fucking great players and fathers and community leaders and businessmen. Tell me it hasn't. I mean, if it didn't work, the NFL wouldn't be as successful as it is. All those guys came from the college model. So there's something positive there and the, the building of young men into professional football players and, you know, leaders in the community and fathers and coaches and all that shit. But the, everything that's negative in it, that can be eradicated and changed. But it seems like we're just trading in all the problems that we had over here for a new bag of problems over here. And it's amazing to me that the, the leadership, and then there's the question, who is the leadership? Who is the college leadership? Yeah. Who is the fucking like president of the college players union? Like this has got to happen. The fact that it doesn't have it, like any traction and nobody talks about it. And it's not something that's the forefront of the conversation. Everyone's just mad at Coach Saban for bringing it up. Again, we are in the finger pointing generation now where it's all about like, he said this, he said that, he did this, he did that. No one ever wants to solve any problems. Everybody just wants to point out that they think his opinion is the problem. And that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, you can't say anything nowadays. Uh Let's dive into it again tomorrow, plus uh, more of these uh, free agencies. We'll get some more shit tomorrow and dive into it. Yep, head first, dive into it. No uh, appreciate you coming on on a, on a Thursday, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow as well. So we'll have you to end the week, and uh, we'll talk about uh, a little bit of your, your Joker and uh, Denver Nuggets. Fucking Lakers Goodbye. suck last night. Later. Um, From one, one legend, legend to, to another, another JB. One legend to another is back to back. Our main man, Steve Kim, um, joining the show. What up, guys? Kareem Cosell. Um, Steve, I got to ask you uh, this whole Nick Saban thing and this whole, I don't know if you saw him on the Senator flo on the floor with, uh, with uh, what's his name? The fucking, what's this guy's name? All the things that I believe Cruz. in. For all Senator Cruz. Did you see that interview? Uh, me and Whitlock talked about it. it so where are you at with this whole thing? Like people are taking off, take, go, going at Nick Saban, and I'm just sitting there like some guy said that he should have just stayed at Toledo if it was about integrity. I said that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Um, yeah, let's just stay at Toledo where I can't get guys and mold them to the NFL. I, I bet if you ask T. Rich and and Derrick Henry if he should have stayed at Toledo, they would probably say no. So I'm trying to figure out like. The people that never played, obviously, this guy that made that post, um, again, back to the whole who should coach or not uh, debate. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, this is unbelievable to me. I think this is why the NFL is becoming more of a watered-down product, as I just told Matt. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I, I think Nick needs to do – Coach Saban needs to do a better job of actually explaining that, hey, I do think the players need to get paid if that's what he believes – but I don't understand this. If that's what he believes, he's allowed to believe it. A bunch of malcontents online complaining about Nick Saban. I hate to tell you this. Nick Saban does not have to agree with you. He could say 50 things that you don't like. Doesn't matter. He doesn't give a shit. He's good. Because there's a lot of things. There's certain things that he says that I disagree with. But I'm not going to whine about it. I, I don't understand this. It's like Nick Saban has a viewpoint. Do you want Nick Saban to give Nick Saban's viewpoint? Or do you want him to placate you? I respect the fact he's actually saying things that, hey, this is what I feel. If you don't like it, tough. 
it's good. I would never let another man's bo words bother me to this degree, honestly. Hey, before we dive into some football, in di deep dive into this free agency, I wanted to ask you about a few key guys that, that signed. I got to ask you about this clip that's going around about the Joshua and uh, th the fight. They're saying it's fake and he didn't hit the guy and all this. Is that is that just is that crazy or am I crazy? I don't pay it any mind. Look, he got hit. It wasn't was the first knockdown. Did he get hit? Yeah, was it the cleanest shot? No, but I, I don't pay it any mind. I think it's he got a hit for time. sure. Like <laughs> that just was a poor angle where it looked like he didn't get touched. But at the end of the day, like uh, Steve said, that was the first hit. The last hit that yeah. got him on the ground definitely connected a, a man doesn't fall down with their leg bent back like that on you can't act that good <laughs> I, I, people do anything for clicks uh i gotta dive into this mike tyson at 77 years old fight against paul he's going to they're gonna have some sort of fight stipulation agreement do you know anything about it i mean i've heard uh, bigger gloves headgear i don't know what the rules of engagement are gonna be i think that, yeah that, that's what uh. Mario brought it up on the show yesterday when we taped it or a couple days ago. That Who takes wants away. It? Huh? Who wants the headgear? Probably Jake Paul. I, if you put it, look, bottom line is professional boxing is eight to 10 ounce gloves, no headgear, and you could take someone's head off and concuss them at will. If, it's, if there's anything else other than that, it's not really professional boxing, and I lose interest. Yeah. If it's headgear, I'm not you, watching it. Let, let me ask you guys is, it, is that more of a. A protection clause from 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 management, uh, agents, publicists. That my fifty. What is he? Fifty seven. I don't think it's Mike Tyson's son. I think Mike Tyson's the fighter here. I mean, again, yeah, this is what's being speculated. Look, if Jake Paul would go in there and say, you know what, I'm going to go into the lions den and have Queen Lamarcus of Queensbury rules, and I can get knocked out and concussed, and you might have to carry me out. I'd say, you know what, I'm fascinated. I am curious to know if you can survive this. But if you're going to put in a bunch of shackles and handcuffs and restrictions, that is, what are we really watching? Yeah. See, on one hand, Jake Paul can't say, and then let's say, again, I'm making an assumption. If these rules do exist, and I hope they do not, but they're not going to listen to any of us. So if these rules exist, right? I don't ever want to hear Jake Paul say, well, I'm taking boxing seriously. Because you're not then. <laughs> I was going to ask you my next question about that. He keeps coming out saying he wants to be a real boxer and wants to fight real people. I haven't yet to see him fight a real boxer yet. And the one that well, guy that he did fight, he lost. So he, Yeah, the, the worst of the Furies. And look, he has fought another guy that was a quote-unquote real fighter. Wasn't high level. Look, I give him credit for getting in there. Anything can happen. But again, if you're going to say I'm a real legitimate boxer and you are, and if you are the ones in your side putting in these restrictions that make it safer for you, well, then the, how real of a boxer are you? Yeah. Hey, Steve, let me ask you this real quick, man. What's the latest on your favorite boxer of all time, Ryan Garcia? Any updates on him? Um, I'm still seeing a few tweets here and there of some craziness going on. What's the light? Um, well, he's training sort of with Derek James. He's in training camp. As of right now, the fight is on. Uh, yesterday, he tweeted that he knew who killed Tupac. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder if he also knows who off Biggie, um, who really killed JFK, and then, uh, you know, who has the Celtic Sea Scrolls. I, you know, Ryan, Ryan is a nutty guy, but he's very, very lucky that we live in a current generation filled with dumb people that he can fool into thinking that he's very insightful. It's a great hustle. It's been very lucrative for him. How shocked would you be, scale from 1 to 10, if Ron Garcia were to beat Devin Haney? 20. <laughs> I, I mean, I thought before this Devin Haney was too sound, too technical, too fundamentally grounded and solid to beat him. I really did. The Devin's airtight defensively when he has his legs underneath him. I know yeah. the, the Lomachenko fight, he had problems with the weight. I don't think he won that fight. But Devin Haney, for the most part, by today's standards, is a consummate pro. When, when do you lose punching power, Steve, your professional opinion, or do you? Because I still think I'm as cock strong as I've ever been. You're not. Uh, 
George Foreman has videos out there. I've seen you talk about hitting a bag, and he still would that would crush somebody's fucking ribs. Well, they say the power is the last thing to go. Look, if you're if you have natural strength and big heavy hands, and you know how to turn over a punch over your knuckles, you're always going to be able to hurt somebody. The question is really the cardiovascular uh, capabilities. What you could once do for 30 minutes, you may only be able to do for 15. So if you look at Mike, still very good in training videos where no one's hitting him and still has really good short area quickness. Um, He's been trained so long or did that for so long. It's almost a natural instinct to get in there and to do that peekaboo style that was taught to him long ago by Customato and then Teddy Atlas, Kevin Rooney. Um, But could he really do a 12 round fight against a legitimate heavyweight? No, he really couldn't. But look, when when you can punch people really hard, you never really lose that ability. It's the ability to really catch a guy clean and to do it consistently that really fades. Let me ask you this. You mentioned Mike Tyson's style. Like it's so it's so unique. Why has no one like tried to mock it in today's era? Is it is it so unique that just only Mike can do it? Or people are just not students of the game. I've, I have yet to see a fighter, a heavyweight fighter, or, or any weight class really take on that Mike Tyson style that was so unique. In my well, opinion. the peekaboo style is very, it's a very specific style. Not a lot of guys even used it 50, 60 years ago. And I think generally you got to have like a short squat guy that can bend a little bit at the torso. Uh, it's got to have quick feet. And they used to call it a system. And he had numbers for the punches certain combinations that would call out like a two, three, five. And you almost had to be programmed to be in that style. And I think it's very difficult. It's, that style's not for everybody uh, because you can run into a lot of punches if you don't have that ability to slip punches and then move your feet inside. Um, but I don't, you know, it's funny, don't know. I don't see a lot of trainers teaching that style. When I go to the gyms for all these years, uh, there was a group of guys at Cat Skills that were um, custom auto disciples. That kind of taught it, but it never really caught on for the most right. part. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. I agree. Um, Steve, I want to get into uh, – he still looks fucking phenomenal to me in shape and all that, but, like, I – you know. He looks like me. He looks like me, honestly, which is surprising. Yeah. Um, I would literally knock you out. And me and Jay – by the way, real quick, Steve, me and JB are planning to do a three-round uh, boxing match, JB and I, in July. Steve. I'll give you the oh, details man. once we uh, have everything out. But we'd love to have, like, you in my corner, honestly, man. Like, I- I've been waiting for this moment to ask you for this, and I want to do it on this public platform, man, to see if we can get it validated and verified. Will you be in <laughs> so our corner I get, to I fight get JB? Whitlock? I get Whitlock? Yeah, he'd have to do it by Zoom because he wouldn't show up. But, yeah, I guess <laughs> – Hey, uh, Steve, I want to go into these teams real quick with you. I just started with Matt, but I want to get into a few teams. And I want to start with New England because we always kind of talk about what they've done under Belichick's last few years there. Um, They got Jacoby Brissett, who sounds like it's going to be a mentorship program there with him either being the starter for a year or being a guy that tutors somebody else. Uh, They also signed Nathan Rourke, uh, who was already there, quarterback. But they got Antonio Gibson um, running back. They got Kendrick Bourne uh, re-signed him, who I think is serviceable. They got they re-signed Jalen Rager, re-signed Hunter Henry, and then they got uh, a one-year deal with Austin Hooper. Um, and then they got two. They got three O linemen who I like a lot: Tyrone Wheatley Jr., uh, Chukawuma Okafor, and then Michael uh, Owen Owen Winu or whatever his name is. He re-signed. Um, a 38 million guaranteed deal. Then they went on the defensive side and got Josh Ushi, Anthony Jennings. Uh, they re signed Christian Ellis and then they got Siona Tataki, a uh, two year deal linebacker. Did they make any moves to get better at all? And are they banking on starting a rookie QB in New England? Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, look, Brissett's a really good backup. They got the third pick. A lot of flotsam and jetsam. They got serviceable guys, older guys. I didn't see any names that really stood out. Uh, Gibson, the running back, he's pretty versatile. They got him from Washington, right? He hasn't been a bad player. Um, I think they're going to have to draft the number one receiver. They got to get faster overall outside. I mean, I'll say it again. Belichick's drafting on the perimeter the last seven, eight years has been terrible. He said it back years and years. 
I mean, I don't know what else. Everyone makes excuses. I'm like, guys, we are in a results business. List his draft choices outside, and you will actually be disgusted how bad it's been. Horrible. Nikhil Harry, Devontae Parker. No, well, Parker was not drafted by him, but I'm just saying, look at the guys that they've had boys in TCU a long time ago. One bust after another. Um, so it is what it is, and Mac Jones became the scapegoat. I thought that was a little unfair because he led them to a playoff not too long ago in his rookie year. Look, the Patriots, they have to be willing to give their new coach a little bit of time here because it looks to me that like they got a lot of stop gaps. I didn't hear a lot of front name lines, names uh, on that roster you just listed. So it is what it is. They're a rebuilding franchise. All right, so I want to move over to Smitty's, you know, favorite fucking just loves Lamar Jackson. We're going to go to the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I've been a uh, – I'm not – I'm not, I've been opposed, just personal opinion, on this signing right here. Um, mm-hmm. Where are you at with Henry, Lamar, the combination? We know about the new OC. Um, where are you at with this signing, and do you see it working? Um, that's an interesting mix. I know, uh, look, Derek's a great downhill runner. I don't know how he's going to really work at in terms of being a running back with the read option. Um, can he make those quick jump cuts where you make a guy miss? I'm not so sure that's really his game. You're going to probably have to limit his pitch count, probably no more than 15 to 20 carries in any given game. You know, he's an older running back, closer to 30, may have passed that threshold. You know, but he's the type of guy that can close a game out for you. If you know you're going into a four-minute offense and you need two and a half first downs to grind the clock, yeah, I mean, it works, but I don't know. I I prefer to have a little bit more of a faster back back there with Lamar Jackson if you're going to threaten at the mesh point. I'm the same way. That's kind of my my deal. We know how great both those are in the run game. Lamar, like Matt said, Lamar's led that team in rushing six years in a row. How is that going to change? I, I don't see him getting under center, reversing out, handing him the ball because that turns Lamar into a what we would call a quarterback that is a pocket guy. We're gonna we're gonna say that Lamar is gonna go under center, hand the football off, run play action off of it. That's not Lamar's game at all. You're not gonna turn it into his game this late in his career either. I I don't know. Listen, it, like Smitty loves it. I. Uh, he may be right. It works. I, I'm not saying it's not going to work. I'm not. I, I'm just saying that I don't like the mesh because I know Munkin and what they what they do. They run tight O line splits. They're a they're a they're a, a gap read outside zone. Uh, that is a total complete schematical change. If we're going to get into two team in the nose to the backside backer with an ISO or a power scheme. Everything changes up front, and it also changes my RPO for Lamar, and it changes my sprint out game. And and Derrick Henry still, the last time I checked, is not a quarterback guru. I don't think Derrick Henry's going to fix his horrible mechanics and delivery late in the game. <laughs> well, that is what it will look. But Derrick, I'm assuming goal line, short yardage when you know you need a yard. And look, Lamar's at that point in his life. You don't want him taking too many hits. And he does a pretty good job of protecting himself. And look, when it's third and one or second and goal from the one-inch line, uh, you just give that ball to, to the Bama slammer and it gets the job done. Uh, look, I it, it's not a perfect fit in my view. It really isn't. And I know last year the Ravens had uh, Mitchell. There's a really fast guy that blew out his knee. He was going to be a real factor down the stretch, and he got hurt. So, and and I, that's why I dive a deep dive into this to, to and, and into Smitty's uh, take. We love Derrick Henry. We know what he is. He stays in top shape. I, listen, I respect the shit out of what he's what he does. And um, I, this is my take, though. Mitchell will be back, Steve. Yeah. To your point, and that is their dynamic guy. Their home run hitting back that I thought hurt him late in the year when he got hurt. But how do you go from Derrick Henry schematically to Mitchell as a spellback that they're going to have to use and not change and have two completely well, different ideologies? Thunder and lightning, lightning and thunder. Right. And look, but Derek the may be the, different, Matt. Or Steve. But he might be the whole, he might be the closer, the guy that you finish out the game with. That, but that, what that's I'm saying the- is schematically speaking, 
Mitchell's not a guy to run ISO with in power. He's a guy you run outside zone, you know, speed option, toss, shit like that with. It's a completely different scheme up front. Now, if you're going to run the same scheme and just say, oh, fuck it, we're going to just work it and work it and work it, so be it. Uh, I mean, I've had those type of backs before, but I just don't see the action and the rub and the mesh and the continuity off of Lamar's run game that is going to be able to be married up. I, I just don't see it. It's a, it's a crazy combination. I'm, I'm willing, at least it's interesting. I want to see what Munkin does. I, I do like Munkin. I know he's a great play caller and schematical guy. I'm, I want to see what he does because I would love to see it myself. As a coach, hey, bring me the talent and I will figure it out. And again, yeah. I didn't coach, but that's my that'd be my mindset. No, I, I rather I rather have Derrick Henry and I have to figure it out than to not have him and and and, and be with less. He, yeah. He's a, he's one he's a hall, future Hall of Famer. He's one of the best backs in the last decade. When he's healthy, which is typically most of the time, the man always runs for a thousand plus yards. And he's just a guy who it might be fourth quarter and he has twenty two carries for. 60 yards and out of nowhere he ends the game with 30 carries 150 yards and two touchdowns because he's a guy that after a while you keep hitting him and hitting him and hitting him defense man you're you're gonna get tired that guy is a superhero if you ever seen Derek Harry in person he's a fucking defensive end that's in the running back position and you do not want to hit that guy all game long so I think like Steve said it takes carries away from Lamar which is great I think they'll have to make some adjustments they, they probably will uh, add a, a few, you know, under, under the center plays. In my opinion, I think they'll go heavy pistol because that still allows you to yeah. allow Derrick Henry to get that full head of steam, but it's also allow Lamar to do a little bit of, of read option from a different a different formation as well. So I think, listen, these guys get paid a lot of money for a reason, and I think these coaches, I think, I think you know, Monk in and these guys will adjust to Derrick Henry. I, and my only counter to that is, Steve, like if you're trying to take the load off of – Lamar, like you just mentioned, I don't think that's the way you do it because it's you haven't been able to take the load off him yet. He's your leading rusher for six straight seasons. Because you have, they haven't had a, a thousand yard rusher since Mark Ingram. That's why Mark Ingram was their last like Pro Bowl running back. It's because of the scheme, Smitty. It's not because they don't have a back to run for a thousand yards. They run read option. That's what I'm saying. They they run a system that's only it's it's for Lamar to one plus the run game. Like, they didn't do that with Mark Ingram. How are you going to do that? And and the, here's my point, though. If you do that and take the load off, like you're mentioning, okay, cool. You know what that does to Lamar now? So when they do load the box to stop the guy you're taking the load off for, he has to throw the football. And that's perfect. Play. You got AP. Lamar ain't a fucking, again, I believe Lamar can throw the ball. Like, I'm not the one. That's you who think the box is loaded and he just doesn't know how to throw the fucking ball over the top of their head. Stop it, JB. We're not about to go that route. I don't feel like, I told you today, I didn't feel like arguing. I do not, do not say some BS on here. If they load the box, Lamar's an NFL quarterback. He can throw the fucking ball. They load the box. Come on, JB. You How's can still work? make that throw today. How's that worked out lately? <laughs> hey, Steve. AFC Championship you. game. <laughs> Before you get out of here, have you ever seen this many team or players go to teams in the same division? Patrick Queen, we're going to have on the show. He goes from the Ravens to the Steelers. Uh, that's crazy to me. I don't know if Ray Lewis would have done that. Uh, and I get it. It's about money. Smitty and I brought this up. I'm just, Let's just keep money out of it. We get that's a factor and a huge one. That's everything. Have you ever seen this many, though? Like, just I, I'm just thinking that it's, it's – is it, is it tied really in at it, all? Does it tie see, in at all to the jersey swap era? Maybe, but also I, I expect more of this where the rivalries will not matter. I remember, like, the, the certain players would say, I would never play for that team. But when you have transfer – portal guys going from Alabama to Georgia or to direct rivals, USC to UCLA, it's a different world. That part of the game, I think, is dead where there's a true rivalry and spiritually you say, I wouldn't play for that team for a billion dollars. I don't think that exists anymore. I agree. I agree. Uh, we got all these, you know, we, look at the Aaron Jones to the Vikings. and I mean, it's just crazy. I've never seen this. I just have never seen this much. I'm not blaming nothing. I just I haven't seen it. That's all if, I'm if saying. If the team that you're on doesn't want to pay you, no, why I get it. am I still going to be loyal to you? The Packers went and got Josh Jacobs and said, well, we are getting rid of you, Aaron Jones. Why the hell am I about to be loyal to the Packers still? Then they're not loyal to me. It makes no sense. 
No, no, it wasn't about being loyal. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying like, I've never seen it. That's all. Yeah. Um, Steve, as you exit today and enjoy the weekend, have you seen the Colts new starting QB? <laughs> Joe, what, something happened to AR5? No, Joe, he's trying to be, he, he's just being funny. Oh, they still have AR5 there? This, I this think is our Joe backup. Harder. <laughs> Joe Flacco's probably the starter there. Hell of a backup, man. Flacco, be that veteran in the locker room, man. You won't be used this year unless it's a blowout. But appreciate you being there. You want to talk about two quarterbacks where you got to have completely different offenses. That's I mean, we did that last year with Gardner Minshew, though. It's yeah, that's situation. I agree. Shane Stike is a bad. Shane Stike is a bad boy. <laughs> I, I'll just say this with AR five: keep yourself healthy. I talked to him. Can good. still wing the ball a little bit. I mean, he led a team to the playoffs. I mean, so AR five is a bad boy. He gonna be healthy this year. I, yeah, we haven't even seen a guy that you're going out to him. He's good, y'all. Don't worry about yeah, that. Even, even is gonna be amazing. I haven't even fucking seen the guy in college and a little less the league, and he's a bad boy. Uh, yeah, seen him in the league. Seen him in hey, the league. Uh, Steve, your winners and your losers so far, just off the top of the head in free agency. The Dallas Cowboys obviously taking the heat. Jerry Jones fighting court cases, got seven baby mamas. We got all that going on. Dak Prescott just got accused of a, of an assault uh by a Twitter uh lawyer. We got all this going on. Again, Cowboys continue to Cowboy, but they haven't made any moves. I'm not really tripping. I don't think they needed to. They got a hell of a roster. We've got to figure out how they get over the hump. I don't know. Um, I'm sure they just got uh, who they just got uh, from the Chargers who, who stunned uh, the, the 49ers um, and, and Kendricks. He said, no, Niners, I'm good. I'm going to go to Dallas. Um, probably because he's seeing what's going on in Frisco with the fucking looting. So I, I got to ask you, what, what do you think – Who's the biggest winner and losers uh, in the last minute here before you get out of here? Uh, I'm not really sure. I I guess Atlanta. I don't guys. I don't really keep track of this. I really don't. <laughs> uh, I guess Atlanta. They got themselves a quality quarterback. They stabilized that position. Does I he fit there? They better. Well, if you sign a quarterback like Kirk Cousins, your job is to make it fit. That that's the reality. You don't sign a guy that's put up big numbers and pay him that much. To not make it fit. If you make that a square peg to a round hole, shame on you, honestly. So, but he's got Bijan Robinson, Drake London. I, I guess Pitts is still there. You you have an opportunity to do some things. Uh, I think the Lions signed a couple of defensive backs. They had some real issues on the back end. I think that's something that they need to continually work on. I'd like to see them get another edge rusher to help Hutch because I think that's a really really strong roster and. Uh, they have a great GM and Brad Holmes. I'd like to see what they do in the draft. You know, as for Dallas, the run, you know, them, you know, people making jokes about the Deuce Vaughn era. Look, you can get a running back in rounds three through seven that can be really productive. I'm not really that concerned about that for Dallas. Dallas needs to get tougher up front physically, defensively, the way they got shoved around. And I know they had a really good coordinator that got an NFL head coaching job, but I think there has to be some pressure on Micah Parsons. Are you going to be a guy that's just very flashy and rack up sacks, which is important, or are you going to be a legitimate three-down war daddy up front that could spur a defense? Because what happened in that playoff game was embarrassing. Hey, I know you're a fan of our next guest, Sean King. I'm going to bring him in real quick, uh, say hello. But... Sean, what's going on? What's up, Steve? How you doing, man? Sean, uh, how sad is it going to be when your guy Keith Thurman gets wrecked by Tim hey, June a hey, couple hey. weeks? Hey, I'm, hey, listen, Steve, I'm telling Damn. you what I'm telling you right now. You heard it here first. Oh, no. JB show with Big Smitty. We are putting on a boxing clinic on the 30th. Listen, we're everything that Tim Zoo is. not we're going to box the socks off that boy. Well, here's the thing. Tim Zoo's everything Keith Thurman isn't. An active fighter. <laughs> I, so, hey, and to hey. me, activity matters. It does. It does. And if there is one downfall detriment, is that Keith hadn't been in the ring. I'd say this, though, Steve, unlike a lot of these guys who are inactive, and when you look at the majority of stars in boxing, they are inactive. It's because they get the big payday. They go get fat, lazy, have a good time. Keith has actually been trying to fight multiple times since Barrios, and the fights have fell through. So he has been working out. He has been in the gym over this extended period. I'm just telling you, we're going to put on a clinic against this boy Tim Zoo. Watch what happens when Tim Zhu is able to break through the airspace, body shots. Keith has never taken them well downstairs. And Tim, the Mexican Zhu, 
I, I'm just uh, Sean. If you're right, I will tip my cap to you and I will eat crow. But I'll go on the record right now. Tim Zhu knockout in nine. I'm gonna tell you this. This how this how confident I am. Don't be afraid if Tim if uh Keith stops Tim. Oh what? That, that, wow. That's, that's how much of a boxing. Hold on. Think one time I'm gonna put on. Hold on. Are we putting some money on the line right now? I'm seeing two different sides. What what are we doing here? I don't hey, gamble. I'm, I'm, I'm I in don't Vegas. gamble. So. I'm in Vegas. Uh, Steve will link up when you get here. Sweet and JB, y'all coming out here. Let me know. Listen, one time gonna shock the world. Wow. You he's heard been, it here first, folks. He's been killing himself to make 147. Killing hey, himself. Steve and Sean, before you get out of here, Steve, we're gonna ask Sean anyway. But Steve, I gotta ask you: Denver is out of uh, out of uh, people to grab as a quarterback for the franchise, Steve. <laughs> Who is Denver gonna put at quarterback? How are they depending on a straight rookie? I don't see it. Who's out no, there? They're not. But look, Sean Payton, I've read, likes Bo Nix. He must see a lot of Drew Brees in him. And look, the the Russell Wilson thing, I thought it was a little bit unfair to Danger Russ. Okay, it just was not a fit. And R- Russell has a chance to reinvent himself in Pittsburgh. And, and I said this a couple days ago, Russell Wilson has to be the first guy in, last guy out. Uh, he has to be a, a grinder. Stop being a weirdo. Don't do any more social media posts. No more wind sprints on the team flight. All right, just stay in your seat and stretch out. I, I get it. But honestly, it's just... I've never seen a guy who was such a good guy or thought and then act like this. And then, by the way, Ciara looks like she hit the squat rack. Oh, she got oh, it. Damn. I like, she could two gap inside. But anyway, looking good. But that's the thing with Russell. Be a football player. You're, you've tried to be something that you're not. You, you're, you tried to be cool. I don't want my quarterback to be cool, Sean. I, I really don't. I think the worst thing a quarterback can be is cool. No, no, no. Be a plain, boring mother. That's it. Those are the quarterbacks that generally win. It's the truth. Well, well, I, I came in on the tail end of y'all's conversation, and JB asked you, or Smitty, one of them asked you, who were the who was the biggest winner in free agency? Is by far the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hmm. So you like that Russell Wilson sign? Al, Russell Wilson might be the most undervalued player in the National Football right now. Right now, whether you like him or dislike hmm. him. He completed 67% of his passes last year, 28 touchdowns and six picks on a team that was in disarray. Look at here. And, and they added Patrick Queen at linebacker to stabilize the interior of that defense. I was telling you, Pittsburgh, it's a deep receiver draft. I think this might be one of the deepest receiver drafts I've seen in a while. If they get one of these wide outs to replace Deontay Johnson opposite of Pickens, man, this team, uh, Pittsburgh can be dangerous. Yeah, and if I'm Russell Wilson, I do this in silence. I get every one of my skill position guys' phone numbers, and I do workouts. Don't put any of it on social media. Don't just, – just don't. I don't understand why every player has to say, I'm grinding or I'm at the lab. No, you're not. You're doing what you're supposed to. Okay? Well, because because if they don't say it, then we say they're not doing anything. So, like, it's a – Yeah, it's well, a Sean, yin or yang. It's a give Yeah, but Sean, but, Sean, where there's some yokel like me say, well, Sean King didn't do stuff in the – and if you did – who the f- really cares? Hey, like, I, I, hey, when I when I mentor guys coming into the NFL, you know, and, and I'll be interested in, in, in Jamie and Smitty's opinion on this. I tell them one of the biggest adjustments from college to the NFL is hearing yourself criticized all the time in the NFL after coming from college where nobody really ever criticizes the actual individual player. Man, it's hard when you get up and you eat cereal and like you turn the TV on. And somebody yelled, yeah, Sean King sucks. The Bucks have lost their mind. He does not worth that money. He should. I mean, you can say it doesn't affect you, but it does. Look at Lamar Jackson when he plays in the game. Tell me he's not trying to show people he can throw the ball from the pocket. No, like no, the, the, criti- the criticism start to spill <laughs> over into your performance. So what you're saying you is you're saying him. Lamar Jackson and Ravens failed to reach the Super Bowl because of Coach JB's criticism of Lamar all year <laughs> long saying he can't throw the ball. Got you. No, they they no. saying it seeps into your play. It I know, seeps I'm, into I'm your I'm play, right? Around, like you, 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 you subconsciously go into the game, I'm going to prove that I can throw the ball from the pocket to everybody as opposed to I'm going to do what helps us win and be successful in every play. And I'm not trying to isolate Lamar. That's just a, yeah, a, yeah, contextual, yeah, yeah. a contextual apparatus that people are familiar with. But, man, it's hard when they're talking about you all week. And nothing to do between Sunday to Sunday, but listen to them shows and everybody, especially when they're wrong. 
Like, you really go out in the game and people, athletes won't say it while they're playing, but you're trying to prove them wrong. You're trying to prove that narrative wrong. That's why you get that energy sometimes after the game. Remember Kirk Cousins uh, walking through the uh, – the, the, uh, the yeah. stadium after you the like game. that? You like that? <laughs> well, that was after a great comeback, though. I don't think he was trying to prove anything. And by the way, with Kirk Cousins, Kirk, we love you as the, as the boring white guy. You no need the, the shirtless chain. That's that's cringeworthy. I like God. that. I ain't going to lie. Uh, I like that. I like that. Can Steve. I just get my boring white milk toast quarterbacks back? That's hey, when man. we were a serious country. Hey. But hey, anyway, hey. Sean, good to talk to you. And okay, you so, so Tim Zoo. Okay, so you got Keith. I, I respect the Tampa Bay loyalty. I respect Steve, that. are you going to the fight? No, nah, I'm going to be watching it. I'll be going to another fight out here in L.A. So. All right. All right. See you guys I later. Have a great weekend. You're going to miss history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The ending of Keith Thurman's career. You're right. <laughs> All right, See you guys Steve, later. All right, Steve. Um, All right, let's get the brass tag. Sean King. You got What's the king in here. Right. Yeah, it was here Thursday. It's Sean King. It's the King's. Uh, well, we got to come up with a cold King, name. We're gonna make it We should put JB in the middle. We got two brothers on here. It should be like an Oreo right now. Maybe we maybe yes. way to get some interaction with, with the listeners and the fan base. Hey. Let them name it. Let them name it. I am the dick. You can put me in the middle if you want. So, look, I got to ask you something, Sean. I got to have pause. Hey, Sean, know that's pause shit. Then I'm, I don't feel bad. Fuck it. Major uh, pause. Hey, Sean, I got to ask you, man, who – you said the Steelers win in the, win in the draft so far. Um, teams that have been slept on in this draft, like – or not draft, free agency. Uh, teams that have kind of been thrown to the bus and now they're kind of making a, a, a strong push. Uh, how about the Giants where everyone shit on them and then I think they've came back with uh, McKenzie, Singletary, a couple of linemen. They just got John Runyon over from uh, Green Bay who's going to come on the show next week. Um at didn't, least they they, trade, didn't they trade for Brian Burns, too, from Carolina? They got Brian Burns, yep. Um, that is a pretty good get after the first week. They lose Saquon. Everyone's, oh, shit, what are they going to do? They're going to get rid of Daniel Jones and all this shit. They're going to take a huge cap and get rid of Daniel Jones. Now they're starting to fight back. I like what the Giants did, at least. They didn't lay down and take it. They did, and I still think they got to get quarterback fixed. Uh, I think when you look at their skill positions across the board, I mean, Darren Waller's talented, but – his recent history says he's not going to play a full season. And that wide receiver group, I mean, they don't really have a significant standout. So I feel like when that's the situation and the quarterback has to be above par, he has to be borderline elite difference maker. So they got to get that figured out. And then I think Devin Singletary is a huge downgrade from Saquon. So they got some issues offensively. I think defensively they did get better. When you pair Brian Burns with uh, Ojulari and Thibodeau, I mean, that, that's a legitimate, you know, group of guys that can get to the quarterback. So they did some good things, but like a couple teams in the league, they got to figure out quarterback. No doubt. Um, the Eagles, obviously, they get Saquon. They uh, they get Gardner Johnson back after he bashed the whole fan base a year ago. <laughs> uh, they get Landon Dickerson up front. Um, they added another tight end. They, got, they re-signed Brandon Graham. Uh, they got Bryce Huff off the edge. I, you know, they got a kicker and a punter. I mean, I don't know where you are with them. I mean, their Eagles are still, you know, they're contenders. Obviously, the last few years they've been in the mix. Uh, I don't think they had to do too, too much. But um, I think they got to get another third receiver. I, I don't know. But uh, Jalen had a down year. I think he has to bounce back as well. Um, where you at with the Eagles and, and that NFC East? Staying in the NFC East, just do it in totality. You got the Giants. We already talked Washington. Um, who uh, I, I believe just got a few. I think that Washington got better. Right? They got yeah, two, they did. They did. Yeah. And Dallas hasn't done much. But can you tell let, let the audience know that it, Dallas is already loaded? I don't think they had to go out and make seventeen free agents picks uh, pickups. I think people are overdoing that one. But at the same time, the other teams in the East are trying to get better. Uh, I think. Of, well, I'll start with with. Uh, the initial team, which was the Eagles. You know, first of all, fantasy football world is in an uproar. I mean, how are you going to decide who's going to get the anytime touchdowns between Jalen Hurts and the QB sneak and Saquon now? <laughs> I'm still no leaning on the QB sneak, so I ain't going to lie. Take a point. <laughs> I'll say this, though. I think the Eagles need counseling. I, I mean, I mean that in a, in a serious way. You know, anytime 
the security apparatus gets removed from the field and they say the head coach, you know, is so emotionally hijacked on Sundays that he can't operate without a safety net. I mean, that speaks to internal issues. You could tell by Jalen Hurts' body language, he wasn't happy. Obviously, A.J. Brown was pissed. I mean, so they got some internal stuff going, like from a relationship standpoint within that locker room that they got to get fixed. It's not a talent issue. It's a culture issue. And maybe Shane Steichen and uh, what's the guy in Arizona? D the coordinator, D coordinator that left. That left. You know, may, maybe maybe they were the glue that kept that thing together. So, you know, I think Philly has to figure that out. Washington, I think their success and failure revolves around one Damn thing. It. No, I think Sam Howell is a legitimate starting quarterback in this league. I think mm. what he was able to do last year without any kind of pass protection uh, in an uneven season where new ownership came in, you knew his head coach was probably getting fired. There was a rift with the offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy, And go look at some of his performances. I think he did more than enough to prove that if put in the right situation, he not just can win for you, he can be dynamic and elite. And if they come to that conclusion, man, think about the opportunities not exist to trade down from two for somebody that wants to come up and get a quarterback. You can add another first round pick next year, another second rounder, add a first rounder this year. You know, these kind of things that can make the organization success sustainable. So when I look at Washington, I think that's their big decision because I think Sam Howell is as good as anybody that they would draft it to. Interesting. Interesting. And are, are you so, are you, where are you at with the Cowboys? I mean, we hear all this drama, Jerry Jones drama. Schultz came out on McAfee show and basically said it's a zoo over there. I come over to Houston, who has never won anything, and it's business here. And people are here that in the state of Texas are like, how the Texans of more serious business than the Cowboys is crazy. Hearing that from Dalton Schultz, where are you at with this whole thing? Is it, are the Cowboys just going to continue to cowboy? Uh, should they have blown it up as Dan Orlovsky just said yesterday on Dan Patrick's show? Uh, he came out and said they should have got rid of the coach, the quarterback. They He named it all. Um, he said there's no. they're at a point of no return now It was his point. Not that they're just horrible players or coaches. They're just at a point of no return now that you're kind of in. You're going to have to re-sign Dak. And now you got McCarthy on his final leg. You're going to have to re-sign him or go start over at, with a coach. If you start over with a coach, you might as well start over with a quarterback. It was his point. You agree or disagree with that whole Cowboy statement? Well, uh, I don't know if you got to reset the whole thing back to square one, especially you got to understand the context around this. Jerry knows he probably don't have a whole lot of orbits around this 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 thing left. So for him and his age to to hit the reset button, like we're going to tear it all down and rebuild it, I mean, he knows that's not realistic if he really wants to, you know, and who knows, he could live to 150, but we're just talking about when you look around, I mean, he's kind of getting that age where, you know, you can start seeing the finish line, so he's not going to blow it up. I'll say the surprising thing for me was when they let Tony Pollard go, but they weren't active with Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler, Derrick Henry, you know, one of these other backs. That's kind of what surprised me because, say what you want, they missed Ezekiel Elliott. In short yardage and goal line situations, he was excellent for them two years ago. And they didn't really have that this year. Tony Pollard's not an in-between the tackle, short yardage guy, and the rest of the guys are smaller than him. So on offense, it was the running back not addressing it. In defense, it was defensive tackle. And then what are you going to do at cornerback if Gilmore, if you decide not to bring Gilmore back, in free agency. You got Diggs coming off an injury. Now something that I think was a strength is kind of a question mark in some ways. Speaking point. of that same state of Texas, Houston seems to be on fire. They got Joe Mixon, um, Dalton Schultz re-signed. Uh, they got uh, Danico Autry. Uh, they go out and get um, yeah, Hunter on a two-year uh, edge Dude. rusher. They got um, Shahir, Al Shahir, signed a three-year deal. They got Mike Ford. Lonnie Johnson, my former kid who's been on this show, he goes back to Houston who drafted him uh, from, from New Orleans. They got uh, Okuda, signed a one-year $4 million deal, and then they went out and got Fairbairn. Uh, he re-signed again for 16 mil. To me, that they stood on business by re-signing Schultz, a safety net for CJ, and then they re went out and got Joe Mixon, which I think fits that offense when Tate Dell, my other kid, gets back healthy. I think that offense with Nico and all those guys that he had with CJ 
As long as CJ don't have a sophomore slump, Sean, and you can tell everybody about that in the NFL, when the book is out on you, defensive coordinators that get paid a lot of money in the NFL do a lot of different things against you uh, game to game. Um, I think that's dynamic uh, set of tools that he has in just year two. D'Amico Ryans is, is, is doing a hell of a job in the GM there. Houston's changing the changing it up, and they're now the team in Texas, it seems like. Yeah, I think you, they get an A-plus just for the whole D'Amico Ryans era so far. It's still in its infancy, but, I mean, first of all, Lovely Smith don't get enough credit for where he had that team from a culture standpoint. If you look at the second half of the season – with Lovey, they were extremely competitive. They covered a lot of games. So it wasn't like D'Amico walked in to, you know, disarray. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he added some pieces, of course. I said last year, C.J. Stroud was the best quarterback in that draft by far. Uh, I wasn't sure that Will Anderson was worthy of what they gave up to move up and select him, but, I mean, he ended up having a great year. So pairing him with, with Hunter from Minnesota, I think, gives you a really good pass rush. The big thing for me is, and as you mentioned, shout out to my boy Tank Dell. We recruited the hell out of Tank Dell in South Florida. He's a baller. Uh, tell him to eat. Tell him to make sure he eat breakfast, lunch, dinner every day. Get some weight on that little frame. Hey, I tell him. I told him the other day. Um, I was telling him the same shit. I'm like, boy, you ain't changed since Indy. You look exact same. But I think, I think, I mean, Mixon's an upgrade from what they had at running back. So they got better. Um, I don't think you'll get a sophomore slump from CJ. He seems to be pretty mature for his age. Um, I have seen him quite a bit, you know, uh, NBA All-Stars, Celebrity Game, uh, whatever in the hell he walked out with Amber Rose, whatever that was. So he has been out there a little bit, but uh, he, he just having a good time. Hopefully he'll get back locked in. That was a misunderstanding. She Her, her driver or something had left. He offered her a ride back to the hotel. They had never met each other prior to that point. That was a story, and I'm gonna believe. I'm gonna believe in that story. Hey, listen. Hey, message to these young athletes. But she didn't play it like they had just met. She stopped at the front of the car, exactly. turned around, took the exactly. pictures. Like I mean, just y'all. Hey, y'all were really smart enough, fellas. Hey, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have them on the show here uh, next week. I think I'm. I, I'm gonna say. I, I, I hope you hit shit. Uh, let's let's get into uh, this this last piece here. Um, I'm curious on what you think about Flacco to Indy and then Minshew going to the Raiders. We talked about it. We didn't talk about it last week yet, but it hadn't happened. But I got to ask you, Minshew to the Raiders tells you what? That Aiden O'Connell's the guy? I think it tells me that they wanted at least some semblance of legit competition for O'Connell because they're unsure with the draft capital that they have if they have enough ammunition to move, move up. up to get Jaden Daniels. How do they can? I think that's what – because they got a 13th pick, but then, I mean, they only got, like, I think four or five picks total in the draft. I think that's what that's about. We don't want to be just Aiden O'Connell. We know Minshew's not necessarily a, a, a top elite quarterback, but that gives us more competition than we would have. And if Jaden – you know, if they can find a way to get Jaden Daniels, then Jaden Daniels will be the starting quarterback. Yeah, so let me ask you this, though. So if they do find a way to get Jaden, like – are they going to just keep O'Connell and keep Minshew and keep and just have all yeah. those guys on the same roster or what? Yeah, and I think the safety in Minshew is that you saw him coexist with Anthony Richardson last year, who was a high first round draft pick, and they didn't have any issues. So that probably brings them some comfort that Minshew was cool. I mean, hell, Minshew just got two years, twenty five million, baby. I wouldn't say a word. I'd be smiling all day, every day. You know, hey, coach, you need me to get you some coffee? You need some sunflower seeds? It wouldn't matter if I played or didn't play. At that point, um, but but I think that's the situation there, I and mean, we'll see how it works out. Um, the one thing that worries me if they can't get Daniels is, I mean, AP, you finally got this opportunity, right, to be a head coach, and now your fate is in the hands of Gardner Minshew in the division with Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes. I just, ah. I, I was hoping, I was hoping that they went after Fields. I, yeah. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know my boy Garrick McGee. I'm sure you know Garrick. Um, yeah, uh-huh. So he recruited all three of these cats: AR5, Lamar, and Aiden O'Connell. And he told me he's like, "Look, I had O'Connell at Purdue uh, a couple years ago uh, before they went to Louisville again." And he was like, "The dude is a is a top five ball spinner in the league right now." He said he can spin it now. He's like, "JB, I'm telling you, this dude is big time. 
Does he have the it factor? Does he have the intent? We don't know. I don't know if we've seen enough of him. I don't know if the Raiders are good enough around him. You know how it is in the NFL. You got to have the right pieces at the right time on the right roster, uh, in the right division. The whole shit gets trickles down to one thing. Like they must see something to say, I'm going to roll with them because I don't, I don't see a snowball chance in hell that they can go up to two, at least. Jaden, Jaden's going at least to Washington at two. I. Or New England at three at the latest. Uh, is I don't see the Raiders moving up 10, 11 spots. I just don't see it feasible. I don't either unless they add in a player. And if you do that, you probably – now you, you know, stack the, the thing against Jaden. I'll say this about Aiden. I've got to see him play. Smart guy. He can't spin it. The one thing, he lacks mobility in the modern era with 2024. That's a, a huge impediment. I mean, that makes you have to be so much better everywhere else. So uh, if there's one thing that he probably has there, well, I don't even know if you can improve that, that you would say is kind of a minus for him is he's not a, a, a mobile guy. You're not going to want to be able to extend plays, you know, get to the secondary part of a lot of stuff. So we'll see. Minshew played pretty good last year down the stretch for Indy. They actually beat the Raiders, so they got to see him in person. So it'll be a good little competition. By the way, Joe Flacco's every old guy's hero. Let me ask you, uh, since we got you on, to talk about these cues that, that did sign. Um, Mac Jones acquired, uh, you know, from the Patriots goes to to back up a guy that was picked 13 spots ahead of him in the same draft and Trevor Lawrence. Um, that's one. And are you as high as I am on Sam Darnold? I don't believe we've seen him play in any competency at, at all. I don't think he's been on any roster whatsoever. He's been through four head coaches. Uh, the Jets and the Panthers, when he was there, were probably the two worst franchises in professional football. And he's never had a true wideout tandem or group like Minnesota has. And yet last year, we don't see him play too much when he finally does have competence in a roster around them. So is, is, do you, do you think he can be somebody that shocks people? Cause I do, I think I, I got to coach against him in high school, obviously saw him at SC. I think he's uber talented. I think he fits the system there. It's a, it's going to be a McVay type of system. I think they're going to do things they do uh, with Stafford in, in LA. And I think Stafford, and I think he fits that mold. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's a personal experience. So I did the Bill Walsh internship with the Carolina Panthers when Matt Rule was there. And I, I was around Sam Darnold every day. And maybe the San Francisco experiment changed his wiring. But to me, he's kind of like a little odd personality. Like, you know, he kind of operates under the premise that I've gotten a raw deal. Like, you know how we have a player, he's talented, but he's still feeling like those criticisms, and those rejections. Yeah, like he kind of gives that energy off. But, hey, the association breeds assimilation, right? So he was in a completely different environment over the last calendar year with San Francisco. So maybe, you know, he's a different animal from that aspect. And if he is, then I gave him a shot. I mean, we'll see. I don't love what Minnesota's done in free agency, who they've lost as, you know, compared to who they've acquired. But, I mean, we'll see. And what was the first question? It was before Sam Donald. Mac Jones going to uh, back up Trevor. Same draft class, uh, 13 picks. Um, and, That's a good spot for him, JB. Question, going back to Sam, he's 25. All right, I think he's just turned 26. I, I think there's still time on, on him because of his youth. So that's why I'm saying as far as Sam. And it, I agree with you. He has no – there's no room for error this year. Sam Darnold has the ball. He's got shit or get off the pot. If he don't this year, I'll be with you. But I'm at the same time, I'm like, let's see him – let's see him have three good white owls around his ass. The talent is there. I just – the personality, the self-confidence has increased a little bit. Damn, Bo Nix and Michael Penix the same age as, Matt, as uh, Sam Darnold. I know, crazy. <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I, I show with JB gave gave this little soft landing for some of these other quarterbacks. Man, God, Lee, it's something about Sam Donald where you got a he got a special place in your heart. Let any other quarterback do Dally. what he did. He's Dally. garbage. He's fucking trash. Blah, 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 blah. Sam, Dally. bro, let's give him one more year. Let's Dally. Give him- He's been in a bad system. Cali, baby. Cali, baby. Good. West Coast, baby. Let, let Lamar throw one pick, uh, Mr. King. Let Lamar throw one pick. He, fuck, he can't throw it out right Sam Darnold. <laughs> Come on, bro. I, don't, Sam I know you played, know Sam, but let's keep it real. This man is he garbage. He played, homie. He's garbage in the NFL. It is it's what it is. Difference. I, 
He's probably a good dude. He's probably a nice guy. No, great friend. He ain't all that. He great, ain't great son. He's garbage. Well, he hasn't played, Look. though. Why? Yeah. Why, ain't, why ain't he played? Motherfucker, you, know, you a coach. Shit, well, you had guys on your team who didn't play, JB. Why didn't they play? Because they were trash. Roster. They just got traded to the Niners who had a loaded roster and quarterbacks already in place. What do you mean? Come on, man. You're smarter than that. Brock Purdy. So you got you got outplayed by Brock Purdy. He didn't get outplayed. <laughs> Come on, Sean. Explain to him that there's politics in this. You're not just coming in and taking a Purdy's job unless Purdy got hurt. Come on now. Hey. Well, JB, JB, I can't be you, – you, you can't see comfort with me with Sam Darnold. I mean – if he proves me wrong, I'm okay with it in Minnesota. I'm not saying he's incapable. I'm saying there are some some ways, some some from his the way he approaches the game has to evolve and change a little bit if he wants to become an elite quarterback. Like elite quarterbacks are dudes. You can't ever tell from their body language, their energy, whether they up, down, because they understand I got a job to do that's lead this group. And if I look like I'm not confident, they're not gonna be confident. So he's got to get that fixed. You know him better than me. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. I'm a little skeptical about quarterbacks coming from SC. I mean, historically, that just hasn't worked out great when they faced adversity. So we'll see if he can, you know, be the one that kind of changes that narrative. Hey, you were around him, too, at the professional level. So I'm going to take your word for it, too. I, I agree totally what you're saying because you know the finite intricacies that has to go down in the quarterback's mental. <laughs> We've both been there. It's like, come on, man, we, we got to see – you know, you got to flip that switch or you're done. You're done. You're you gotta, you, oh, JB, you got to be supremely self-confident and you got to be, you got to have bulletproof emotions. I mean, you have to at that position. You got to be able to stand back there and take criticism when it's not your fault and parlay uh, credit when you deserve it all. I mean, if you can't master that, then it's going to be tough in that position. No, no doubt. Uh can Mac Jones be a guy that ends up playing in this league? Man, this is listen. I wonder how Mac Jones' career would be different if San Francisco took Mac Jones instead of trading up for Trey Lance. Because mm. I think Mac Jones, in a lot of ways, is a slightly less athletic Brock Purdy. And he was coming. He was full of confidence coming out of Alabama, where Sarkeesian and him were throwing that ball everywhere. I thought he was a perfect fit for San Francisco. He goes to he goes to New England, and Belichick and went halfway crazy. He gives him a deep court later as his OC, a special teams coach, as a quarterback coach. I mean, what a recipe to just ruin a young young QB, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I'll i say this. I think Jacksonville's a good spot. For one, he's from Jacksonville, went to Jacksonville Bowls. So he's in a, a, a familiar environment. And also, he's behind the quarterback that doesn't seem to be able to play a full season. So it looks like if he goes down there, he's still, what, on year four of a rookie deal? So let's say Trevor misses three, four games like he does normally, and Matt comes in and plays well. He could reset the narrative, you know, on his career. So I do think that's a good spot for him. No doubt, I like that move there. Um, other other moves, I just I'm I'm curious on your quarterback takes on these other guys because here's my take, and it's a bold one. Before you get out of here, I appreciate you jumping on here on Thursdays. Make I sure got as too- much I got as much time as you need. All right. Uh, I told Smitty yesterday or the other day when we saw $180 million being thrown at a guy who just blew out his Achilles at 37 or 36 years old and Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, that that's an indictment on either A, the draft coming up, there's GMs and coaches aren't sold on who's coming out, or B, the landscape of current quarterback position in the NFL, which I've been very, very harsh on. I think it's the most athletically gifted era of our of our lives, but I think the quarterback is the worst that I've ever seen at actually playing the position. Now that's totally different, two different discussions. But I think the quarterback product is so bad that we're going to sign a guy that's done it, and we we're going to risk risk first reward, one hundred eighty million dollars for this guy instead of going out and looking for someone else. There's just no one else. Who who else are you going to get? Mac Jones, like there's no one else. Russell goes to Pittsburgh, I think kind of moved around the market. Um, I don't know if everyone thought that was going to be the case. You got an old school guy like Flacco's going to, to the Colts. I think that is a straight up protection uh, move because they don't know about AR5 yet. We really haven't seen the kid play, to be honest. Um, where are you at with the overall quarterback room, so to speak, as far as 32 teams in the NFL? And this draft class, is there a guy in there that's going to come up and that could have been better for Atlanta? 
Uh, it could have been better for, you know, of course, Washington and New England is going to probably take QBs. And then we got Chicago there with Justin Fields, which we'll end the show with you on uh, your Justin Fields take. Where are you at as far as the quarterback room, so to speak, as far as in totality? Well, let me say this. I thought Atlanta did the absolute correct thing. Uh, when you look at that offense, Drake London, I think, is going into year two, Bajan, or three, Bajan Robinson into year two, Kyle Pitts still young, trying to find his way. They need a, a QB yet. He hasn't. Yeah. Yeah, they needed a veteran presence at QB, not just a good one, but somebody that can go in, teach everybody how to study, get everybody on a routine. I think the reality show, Kirk Cousins really, you know, created a lot of new fans because of the way he he, he lives his life and, and the way he's on a routine. So I think that's something that they need in Atlanta. Uh, the $180 million, I don't get caught up in the numbers. Hell, the Giants gave Daniel Jones 150 last year, and he threw like, what, 12, 13 touchdowns. So... If he got that, Kirk Cousins deserved 300. But uh, <laughs> when you look at the – hey, man, listen, that Daniel Jones deal, boy, look, I just – sometimes, you know, you don't want to hate JB with uh, Smitty, but you be like, God damn, dog, come on, man. I don't know why Daniel Jones got paid that. Daniel Jones probably the one of the worst quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks in the NFL. I've been telling JB this all year long. And I'm so glad another NFL quarterback is on here agreeing with me. That hey, further man. lets me know that I was correct in my stance. Hey, Sean. <laughs> I got other NFL quarterbacks come on the show and then agree with me, though. They think Daniel Jones is, is a guy that could be all right. Who? So, D.A., man, uh, just said it. D.A. just hey. said it last week, Smitty. You are selective hearing, Smitty. Derek Dar- Anderson just came on the show and said, I think J- I think Daniels is getting a short end, too. He has had what zero wideouts. We talk about wideouts, Sean. Daniel Jones has had zero outside guys. He's had a horrible O-line. We give Justin Fields a pass for having no O-line and no threats on the outside, but we just fucking destroy Daniel Jones for having the same exact offense. At least Justin runs for 1,500. God, leave. What is Daniel Jones? He don't run, run like the uh, No, but he's an athlete. Run. Daniel Jones can run. He can, but he ain't just so, a field. So, so let me put context on what I was just saying. Talk to him, Mr. I King. Was, Talk to him, Mr. King. I was, well, I wasn't saying that Daniel Jones is a bust or is – in my opinion, a guy that I would build a franchise around. What I'm saying is they overreacted to making the playoffs because he had another year left on his rookie contract. Good point. That Great. was that 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 was my point. I didn't think you needed to jump the gun and go and create and put 150 million into him. 150 Especially million. Especially by tagging Saquon and all that, right? Yeah. Right, right. That was my point behind it. Daniel's done enough to, you know, want an opportunity to start, but I haven't seen enough where I'm like, that's the guy. You know the thing That's with me and great, Justin. Great point. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. yeah. So I, love it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against Daniel. I'm just, uh, they jumped the gun a little bit on him. But hey, I'm happy for him. Get, get your paper, baby. Uh, but, but I wouldn't have done it. That's all I'm saying. I wouldn't. Have done it. <laughs> not me either. But if I look around the QB market and I look around guys that have signed, Sean, Drew Locke. I'm not fucking going to yeah, Giants. I don't, I don't, I don't know what. Yeah, Drew about. Locke backing up Daniel Jones. Like what the fuck? Like, to me, they should have been going after Jacoby Brissett. If they were looking at a bridge quarterback, I think Jacoby Brissett would have been the guy. Or even give Jameis Winston a chance, you know, in that to go up there. But, I mean, I don't Drew Locke. Come on, man. Even, even after Geno got the money and Drew played last year, he still is indecisive. He doesn't play with confidence. I mean, you can tell when he throws the ball in shorts, he probably looks amazing. But when he gets in the game, he just you can like some guys can't perform. Here in headlights, come on, and, in and that's what he, that's what he looks like to me. So Drew Locke, you got Flacco, you got Cousins that signed, you got Flacco all these guys. You got Flacco all these different guys that, that have signed. Nobody's really jumped off the, the, the like. Oh shit! You got Russell Wilson who goes to Pittsburgh, um, Brissett to New England. I mean, they're going to draft a QB, like you said, it's a bridge QB. They're just, you know, men shoot of the Raider. Like, it's just, to me, I'm listening to these names, and I'm like, the quarterback play in the NFL, dog, is, is XFL-ish. I'm but like, you know, yeah. J, J, JB, you know, you know the, the thing that happens is now, because of what you just said, it's absolutely 100% true, but it puts so much pressure on an organization. Kyler Murray probably wasn't deserving of that huge extension, but they're like, man, if we don't have Kyler – then where are we going? You know, Derek so, Carr. Derek Carr, you know, the couple times with the Raiders, then with the Saints. 
Like I told people, you couldn't tell me Derek Carr. You can't tell me Derek Carr is better than James Winston. I'm just not gonna believe that because I, I watched the you. game. I'm I watched you. the game with my own eyes. So I, I'm I mean, with you. I said it last yeah. year. I said, get rid of this motherfucker. He cannot. He is talk about walk by faith and not by sight and all that shit. He's the scariest cat I've ever seen in a goddamn pocket. It's the same thing with me. To, it's the same thing to me with Baker. You know, I'm a Bucks fan. And I mean, we just gave Baker three years, 100 million, which is about right. 33 million. That's about right. They, they ain't too bad a, today's a market. Today's market. But, but is he like, well, Right. My thing now is, well, we'll be hopefully make the playoffs. And if we do, we'll probably lose <laughs> after the first round. Yeah. <laughs> but there's only so many franchise quarterbacks at any time frame, any generation. Even back in the days, there's only a handful of guys that you know. Like, there's only so many Joe Burrows, Mahomes, <laughs> Josh Allen, Lamars. There's only a handful of those guys. So after that point, you gotta you gotta take what really? you, what you no, can get. Not. Is what I'm saying. And Baker had a solid season. Down. He had a pretty good year. Hey, Smitty, hey, Smitty, focus down. Smitty, listen. I we can't already down, Smitty. No, it's not. Back in the day, everybody had a good quarterback. They don't no more. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They just that, – that is not true. Go that ahead, is not God. true. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Good. Everybody was not fucking good back in the day. God. Everybody didn't have a franchise no. quarterback who could play 15 years in the Super Bowl. That's a, that is false. That was Sean, false. Sh Sean, let hey. the guy who never yeah. saw the game – because right, he wasn't right. born yet. Disrespect Tell every us. all my all my homework and research I did. So in, in, any time frame before you was born, JB, don't ever talk about any quarterback or player ever. Because it's impossible for you to go watch film and watch tape before Man, you was born. I'm I sorry, JB. Go lie. ahead, Sean. Go ahead. Go you ahead, Sean. Every quarterback was great. Like, I'm sorry. Every quarterback was great before now. the last ten years. You, my, you, I apologize. You, but now you're the professional. I watched the game you're wrong. Sorry. You, you're the QB hey. whisperer because you watched the YouTube fucking video, YouTube right? Crazy. This is hey, crazy. I feel, I feel right, like Sean, I'm in the middle of a lover's court. I, I, hey, hey, I'm in the middle of a lover's court. Let me say this. This is how I look at it, Smitty. I just gave Baker Mayfield three years of being our starting quarterback. So what that means, that's what, 16, 32, 48. If he stays healthy, that's 48 games where I don't get to see if somebody else is what I'm really looking for. I would have offered Baker a one-year deal. I would have drafted a quarterback in this draft, whether it be Spencer Rattler, whether it be Michael Pratt, whether if I can find a way to get a J.J. McCarthy, if he fails some kind of way to the end of the first round, I would go because I'm trying to find one that I can build around, hopefully in championships. The Bucs snuck into the playoffs with a what, below 500 record because the division was terrible. Yeah, it was right. Bad. And then and then and then the thing with Baker, I like Baker. There are, are spurts and periods and games where Baker plays well. But well, Baker think he Brett Favre, and that always gets him in trouble. He like a walking suicide bomber. Like, I'm just going to tell you, he's going to do something that he's incapable of doing. God didn't bless him with that skill level, that talent, and it's going to get us beat. I would rather he just played the game more like a Brad Johnson. Good friend of mine, Brad, knew what he could and couldn't do. He was going to check the ball down when he needed to. He was going to throw the ball away when adverse situations created themselves and give us a chance to win. I know Baker is going to – be on Sports Center and make sure we lose the game when it matters the most. All in the same season, multiple times. I, I gotta ask you, like speaking of that, what happened to Kyle Trask? I kid, I recruited out of you know out of Manville, out of Houston. What happened to him? Because I thought he had big upside. He never got to play. We never seen him um, a little bit, I guess, sample size. But was he just the guy there? Like, oh, we're not gonna even give you a shot at all. I just don't think he ever played well enough to deserve it. You know, they, they wanted to. They, they took him in the second round. As good as Jason Light has been drafting, that's probably one of his biggest uh, misses, you know, because uh, I think Brady was already here when they drafted Kyle Trask, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, I, I, I said on local radio in Tampa, listen, they didn't bring Baker Mayfield in because they think Kyle Trask is the, is the quarterback of the future. They wouldn't yeah. have done that, you know. So that, that spoke volumes to me and, you know, for whatever reason, just Kyle hadn't taken advantage of his opportunities. Yeah, I agree. I, I just don't. I, I don't see it. I just think it, it's get it's getting tr progressively worse at the position. Like the quarterback position is progressively getting worse, and it's going to get worse. I don't think this draft class is saving the NFL quarterback room. Like I don't see I, a guy and, in this class. And to your point, JB, I think the talent level of the quarterbacks is high. I think the ability of them to play the quarterback position consistently is low. 
Because exactly in college, right. they're not being asked to play it. Everything is RPO. Everything yep. is sidearm, screen. Like when you look at these tapes, yeah, it's no progressions. They're not calling the plays. The offense is getting quarterbacked by the sideline in the majority of these college programs. So, I mean, a lot of these guys just don't have the ability to go through progressions, throw the ball accurately, be in rhythm, on time, understand when to be aggressive, when to be conservative, that no down and distance, game management. Like, you know, that's at an all-time low. But the individual talent, how fast can they run the 40, how high can they jump, how far can they throw the ball, that's at an all-time high. All that, and I say that all the time. I I got Noel Mazzoni on here all the time, I, and we're like, dog, there's 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 athletes that are quarterbacks, and then there's quarterbacks who are athletic, and and we got great athletes, but they're just not quarterbacks, and it's not their fault. I I, I blame college coaching at an all time high right now. I think we're we're stuck in a seven on seven era. We're in a street agent world where we're taking the seven on seven kid. We're trying to push him to get a scholarship. We're forcing him on some school. He's a high, he's a kid on social media who everyone's offered. So now guess what? We got to offer him too. Really. He's not even that good in pads, but we're going to take him because he's six, six. He looks pretty. He throws at 80. And then we take him, and we're like, fuck, we gave this dude an NIL deal for so many, so much money. And then he's been a complete, Nobody. And then he transfers four times. And then in four years, we're like, oh, this guy's the next quarterback draft. I'm like, this is just what I'm talking about, watered down. Like, it's we're just watering it down, watering it down. And Kurt Warner said it best. He's watching film every day, just like I was doing for a while in the offseason. Like, bubble screen, smoke, now. We're not seeing no dig out the second window. We don't know the difference if you can throw a flat curl route versus cover two or not. I bet you if you ask these quarterbacks, they couldn't tell you the difference. Like, they don't understand anything. Who's hot? Who's not? Sight adjust. Who's the mic ID? Who are we? Are we sliding the protection because we got two off an edge over here? Are we throwing it hot? I, 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 dog, I'm hey, telling you. I've been, I've been hey, at Smitty. practice time. It's bad. Hey, Smitty, to JB's point, that's why a old school player like Brock Purdy can come in the National Football League and have success because Brock plays the quarterback position like a true quarterback. He throws the ball in rhythm. He's anticipatory with his throws. His mind works. You know, he checks the ball down. You know, he has great ball. Load. That's why he can have success. And some of these other more talented guys struggle because they've all gotten by on pure athleticism and ability. And also, I agree with that. But also, Brock Purdy was in put in a perfect situation. Um, one of the best offensive minds in the game and one of the most talented, if not the most talented offensive team around him in Debo, IU, Kittle, CMC, Trent Williams in the O-line. So I also believe if you put some of those other quarterbacks who we're saying is freakishly talented, but not all the way developed as a QB, but you put them in the same situation that Purdy was in, they, they will excel as well. You got to remember yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo, who we all on, the, on, this, on this show, I, I would assume, now not that high on took that San Francisco team to Super Bowl and was a play away from winning as well. So I, I I do believe system matters, scheme matters, your team around you matters, and your coach your coach matters as well. So I think a lot of these skilled quarterbacks who are not fully developed as quarterbacks have been getting put in horrible scenarios. And we watch the tape and we're like, oh, this guy sucks, he's trash, this that, and the third. But we're not considering the entire picture and everything that's going around it. So I think everything matters, but. I'll tell you this, Brock, Brock Purdy makes throws that no other quarterback in his draft class can make. Some of those dig routes that he throws before the guy breaks in, and, you know, some of those, you know, scissors and different things that they're running that he throws. Hey, man, listen, don't. I'm just telling you from watching the tape, yeah. that Brock Purdy plays the quarterback position traditionally like a quarterback. Like, I mean, and, I, and he's, I, a, better, I he's a better athlete than people think. Yeah. I came on the show, too, and I said the best ball he throws is the dig route, which you do not yeah. see thrown in the NFL anymore. You don't see Mahomes yeah. throw it. You don't see Allen throw it. You don't see nobody throwing that sec anticipatory second window dig route off the outside backer dropping into quarter coverage and that safety on the, on the hash throwing it in between those two. You do not see it in the league no more. And he did it better than anybody. I still don't know if he has that it factor. But I still – I do agree with you. He throws the dig route, which we don't see anymore in the NFL, which is crazy to me, and it's a telltale sign of what you just said. Like, dig routes and and and, and bang eight first too high and that we flatten out and shit like that, those are like quarterback 
we're going to devise a system because you can do this. You can throw this route. We are not throwing it because these cats have no clue what it is and no. how to read the coverage. All we worry yeah. about is reading the background RPO, uh, Sean. Yeah, like, is that, let me ask you all this because you guys are both quarterbacks. Is that still necessary in today's game, though? Because a guy like Patrick Mahomes, who does things his way, has has won what? He has three rings, if I'm not mistaken, and trying to do a three-peat, and has won his way. Uh, Lamar Jackson, guy who plays his way, went to the AFC Championship game. Josh Allen is like all, all of the guys who are actually winning the most and makes AFC Championships, winning Super Bowls, winning a lot of playoff games, are not doing these things anymore. So I get from your, your guys' perspective, you guys were taught like the traditional – proper way to play the position today there's a lot of freelance and freestyle and people are leaning on those skill set i'm not saying it's the right thing to do or wrong i'm just saying that's just that's just the way it is right now so is it necessary to have that traditional guy now is well, it, you guys? here's the question that i'm gonna answer and let sean end it with his answer but like what are we teaching the qb why are we coach what what is the quarterback position why are we paying them all that money if they're gonna not if they can't do the basic necessities that quarterback should do like let's be honest Patrick Mahomes has been the worst winning quarterback statistically in the history of football he hasn't had no stellar ass games this is his first 300 yard game this year and his fourth Super Bowl appearance and he had to go to overtime so he won at 180 yards he won with 160 yards like he hasn't just come out dominating like let's be honest it takes all parts to this thing and we've seen a few other quarterbacks win that probably weren't really good. He right? still got there, JB. Like, you can't skip yeah, the yeah. whole journey. Like, but okay, he don't ball in the Super Bowl. Cool, he got there. That's a whole, discussion. Discussion. That's a whole no thing that plays into it. I'm not – I'm just saying as far as your question, like, we're not seeing the quarterback progress, in my opinion, not in the NFL. That's why you see – that's why you saw the most quarterbacks in the history of football take a snap last year. Like, when have you ever seen that many quarterbacks take a snap in a football game in the NFL? Like, a lot of it, injuries, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's, it's not even an only injury. It's just a matter of just the quarterback position, dog, in my opinion, is just, it's so bad right now. It's, it, like Sean said, I don't know if RPOs are sustainable because of this reason. And I'll let Sean take it. When you get to the NFL and you get a Wink Martindale and you get these uh, Spagnolas that say, all right, you want to do this. We're going to fire zone your ass, and we're going to bring the mic who you're going to throw off of, and I'm going to drop the fucking five technique into coverage, and I'm going to pick your ass. And that's what they're doing now in this RPO world that is a college world in the NFL because Lamar, Pat, other guys that we've implemented this system with, Josh Allen a little bit with the, with the QB power read and different shit that NFL usually not accustomed to seeing. Uh, I don't know if you can sustain it. It's not sustainable, is what my question is. My my number one fact of this thing. It's not sustainable, and I think eventually it's going to come full circle to Sean's point, And you're going to have to understand who's hot, who's not, how I can mic ID this thing the right way, how I can read a corner on a too hot on a, on a fucking smash corner concept. They don't do any of this no more, and I think RPOs will eventually die out because. Or maybe it doesn't, and Sean has a different point because you can't hit the QB no more either. And I'm thinking old school. <laughs> if, if you can hit the QB, RPOs would have been dead two years ago. Listen, I, I, I guess my very my opinion is I don't have a problem with RPOs. I have a problem when they become a crutch for the offensive system. And what's happened is I think there are particular times in the game, especially if you want to put a inferior player in a bad position. A, a linebacker that doesn't have side to side movement, or you know, he's not the smartest from a football IQ standpoint. I get taking advantage of that, but when you use it to replace your quick game, and you don't throw any three step concepts because everything is off the RPO, I think that's when you start to get yourself into trouble because now you're stunting the growth and development of your quarterback, of him understanding how to make quick reads, how to get rid of the ball in rhythm, throw the ball on time. I'll say this. The prototype prospect, in my opinion, coming into the NFL, I have C.J. Stroud on my wall. Mm. A guy that does throw the ball in rhythm with yeah. accuracy, has the size, but also is a good enough athlete. If things break down, he can create new opportunities from a first down standpoint. Gotcha. Appreciate that I breakdown, agree. man. Um, John, I got DV Sport, man, and I'm the only guy in the country that probably has it at the house, and the owner's a good friend. So we we could we, I got every game filmed from last year, Super Bowl included. We're gonna have to watching that on Thursdays with you. We can really dive into it because I. It's funny you said that. 
That's why you see quarterbacks never hit the top of their fucking drop in this league anymore. They don't take three and throw it. They don't take five and a hitch and throw it. They're taking five and it just rolls into a sprint out when the protection's not even turned back. Like, I'm like, come on, man. Mahomes is a whore. He does it more than anybody. And he ad libs because he's gifted, just like Josh Allen. He's so gifted, like you're saying, athletically. Yeah, they're the most gifted freaks we've ever seen. But like, it's not what the quarterback position, I guess, as a former player and a coach, I guess. That's a, the two old heads on the hill talking right now. That's, I guess, what we would like to see. We want to see, like, fuck, man, hit the third step and throw it. The slant's there. Like, why are you holding it and sprinting out? And then now we're fucking running around, doing circles, Kyler Murray and the shit. It just is a bad look to me for an NFL, which is the cream of the crop. At the position, I, I expect more, I guess. That's my point. I guess my, my last little nugget to, to what you just said, though, like I, I obviously agree with everything you're, you guys are saying, but the problem is, like when you when you remove that element from a Mahomes or from a Kyler Murray or from a, from a Lamar or whoever, you're taking away that element that makes them unique and so great. It's almost like comparing to basketball. Like Steph Curry, the way he plays the game is everything we were taught not to do growing up playing basketball. He takes horrible shots. You should never do that. Pass the ball around. Get to the paint. You know, if someone told Steph to stop taking these crazy three-point shots, we, we wouldn't see that greatness. So I understand watching Mahomes can be frustrating from an old-school quarterback's uh, point of view, but we also seen him uh, five-step drop back, sprint out, run this way, run left, run right, and throw a 60-yard bomb to lead to a touchdown. And it's like those moments we would just not see if we were so uh, just stuck in the old ways or just keeping everything traditional. And I guess my last thing on top of that is at the end of the day, if it leads to wins, as a former player, that's, I care. That's all I care about. I don't care if you do it traditionally, you do it new school, old school, whatever school. If it leads to winning and you getting jewelry on your finger, hey man, do you? Hey Smitty, this goes back to my Baker opinion. Just because he can do it, that don't mean you can. And it's too many guys that look at Mahomes and his off-platform throws, and you know, and they think that they can do that. They don't have that kind of talent level. My yeah. deal with my quarterbacks is this: until you prove to me that we can go through our full complement of plays on routes on air and you throw the ball, clean pocket, no pass rush, every ball on time, great ball location. Then I don't want to see you throwing the ball sidearm or spinning around, throwing the ball across your body. Listen, these young quarterbacks, if I can tell you anything, learn how to make all your layups. Mm. Learn how to make all your layups. How many times we see these young guys are in the game, guy running in the flat, clean pocket, they throw the ball sidearm, Ball sails over the guy's head or goes at his feet because they just didn't go back to the traditional over the top, see target, hit target, aim small, miss small concept of playing a position. Hey, and this is the thing. I tell Smitty this all the time. This is the fantasy era. So but Mahomes makes two bubble screen throws and Tyreek Hill goes 80 on each one of them. He's got 40 <laughs> fantasy points and the fantasy f fucking fanboys out here think that this is the greatest dude in the history of football, but they haven't watched the film, right? Two bubble screens, Sean. Sean, <laughs> and this is, the, this is my point to your, to your point, though. We don't teach layups first. And when Smitty's talking about what he just said, my rebuttal is, he sees Lamar make one escape, throw it over the top for an 80-yard bomb, and we're like, oh, shit, that's the shit. He is the greatest thing. But then I break the film down, and he was horrific at reading basic hitch corner read. Don't throw the ball on time. We see these huge one-play shots, and we're enamored the rest of the year about these guys. But they can't make a flat curl throw. They can't make a flat slant ball. They can't throw it on time. Like, that's what your point is. I'm glad you made the layup point. That's what it is. We don't have any progression. It's just make a huge play because you're AR5 and you're a freak, but you really don't know anything before that. We know you're a freak, but can you sustain and last in this league and do the shit that you, the basic shit to win you games late in the game? Because your mechanics will fail you, Sean, as you and I both know, and Josh Allen is a perfect damn product of it, uh, of example of it. They'll fail you in crunch time, and if you're not tight with everything from feet to, to delivery, platform, eyes, knowing who it is, and I think we just get super enamored by the big one or two plays a game. Kyler Murray does a runaround for 28 seconds in the backfield against the Raiders, and everyone's like, oh, shit, he's the dude. He's fucking horrible. Hey, who the school is? 
What 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 prospect in this year's draft plays the same way as Kyler Murray? Caleb, Caleb Williams. Williams. It, it's That's Caleb Williams. I said he's a he's the second coming of of him. I've got to say this: Chicago is crazy if they move on from Justin Fields. Thank you. I'm with you. They are crazy. You can't tell me that you can't put together a 30 minute highlight film of what Justin Fields has done under what two different head coaches what will be his third coordinator it's not like it's been an ideal situation remember when he first got there andy dalton was talking about it's my time like how you draft the quarterback early in the first round and the incumbent you know ginger you know it's kind of been a journeyman is talking about it's my time at the press conference so go back I, again not that'd be devil's advocate but it's crazy it kind of sound like daniel jones huh no, hell no. Hell no. You can't put no 30 minute. You probably put a 12 minute thing, you know, 12, 13. You can't hey, put no 30 minute highlight table on Hold there. Hold on, no. It kind of sounds like Sam Darnold, three head coaches. Nah. Hey, man, you, you tell, hey, you tell it, Jokes. Let me get back to facts for a second. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, speaking of Sam Darnold, <laughs> got the goggles on. Hey, we got Smitty. the Sam Darnold goggles. I'm glad we got this graphic made right here, man. This man love him from Sam Darnold. Hey Smitty, watch. Think about what was given up last year to get Bryce Young. That's the floor for what they'll get if they trade out of one. And because it's such a deep receiver draft, by the way, I want to go on record as saying I think Brian Thomas is the best receiver in this draft. That includes Marvin Harrison. Brian Thomas is gonna be a dude. I like I neighbors. I like neighbors. I, neighbors is good. I, listen, I'm the kind of guy I like. like I, don't, I don't have to criticize LeBron to say I like MJ the best. They both are ballers. I think Brian Thomas Jr. is the best receiver in this draft. And I think Xavier Leggett from South Carolina is a faster version of Debo Samuel. So I think it's some guys coming into this. Troy Franklin, like you said, Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison, you know, uh, Adunza from Washington, where I think yeah. Chicago can move down from one. And as long as they stay in the top 12, you know, they still got pick nine. I think they could walk away with maybe a Dallas Turner to add to that defensive line, make it even better, and a Brian Thomas type receiver, and add a first and second round pick next year, and a two this year to replace the one they gave up to get a uh, Twist Sweat. So, I mean, I'm looking at like this could be an organization change in draft if you decide to not fall to peer pressure and take Caleb. Because I'll be honest, guys, I think Caleb's talented. I have no idea how Caleb's going to handle adversity. I was told from people I trust within that SC organization, the only person he communicated with was Lincoln. I, I'm, I've been told the same thing. I got friends on that staff. Really? Same thing. Yes. He didn't even have any communication with Cliff Kingsbury. Nope. Like, it was just Lincoln. Lincoln and Caleb. Nobody else could talk to Caleb. I mean, like, so what? I don't know. I, yes, I don't know how that's going to play out. You know, Smitty, I heard did. it's an absolute shit show up there. <laughs> hey. Like, I'm talking about bad. Um, I agree. Let me ask you this though, Caleb. As far as like to me, I agree. I don't. I don't think the reward outweighs the risk. I think you already have the reward. Build around it and use those picks to get better as an organization. I think if you if you draft this kid, and we're not in the building, of course, and Brian Pohl's got to make that decision. You draft this kid, you're setting yourself back to what you were before you drafted Justin Fields. Like you got no wideouts, you got no O line, you got a new run game. You got to get, you got to get a running back uh, or or running backs, in my opinion. So you're gonna have to recreate that. And I don't, I, Clement is okay. I like they don't have no just, you know, DJ Moore is cool. I don't think he's a one. I tell you this, JB. The only thing that makes sense to take Caleb is job security. If you don't take Caleb and you keep Justin, you pretty much got to make the playoffs this year. And in that division, Detroit's really good. Green Bay's got a hell of a collection of young talent. They just added Josh Jacobs. I get it. If you draft Caleb, you at least got two years. Yeah. Because you're going to blame everything on him being a rookie. So if, from that standpoint, I get it. But if the organization's long-term success and, and development is really what's at the, the pinnacle of the decision, then, I mean, this is a no-brainer for me. Based upon his skill set, though, this skill set alone, if he reaches if he reaches his peak, if he maxes out his skill set, could he be a generational quarterback from your eyes? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Smitty. I think I think Jane Daniels is the best quarterback in this draft. Anyway, I think Drake May is unbelievably overrated. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah. JJ McCarthy is kind of like a wild card. I, I coach him at IMG, so I know his talent level, but 
I mean, he never consistently, in my opinion, threw the ball at a high level at Michigan. They he ran was, the ball heavy. They'll run first team. But but even if you take away the 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 the, the run pass ratio and just look at the pass cutups, yeah, there are plays where he looks elite, and there are plays where you know he misses layups. You know, think first half versus Alabama versus second half versus Alabama. Two almost two different quarterbacks. You know, yeah. I don't think I don't think Bo Nix is an NFL quarterback. I think he's in that Desmond Ritter zone. I think he's a guy that has some success in college, but. He's not going to be able to process it and, and, and perform back there. And I think Penix is probably the best thrower of the football. You just got to have a coordinator that's comfortable with a left-handed quarterback because a lot of coordinators aren't. And you got to be comfortable with his medicals. What has he got? Two ACLs and a shoulder. And he's my age. So, I mean, Bo Nix are working against that in some ways only because, you know, by the time this rookie deal is up, they're going to be in their 30s. You know, if they go first round, sign a five-year deal. So, like, that's when the organizational-wise, you're looking at it from that standpoint. Hey, Smitty, let's end it. Let's end it with Sean with some hell yeah, hell no. Nah. We're right. At, we're already at nine. Let's hit. Uh, hell yeah, hell no, nah, Bailey. Let's do some with Sean real quick, especially talking about three QBs here. Uh, a special hell yeah, hell no. Nah. Hell yeah, hell no, nah, Sean Smitty. Russell Wilson will win another Super Bowl. Hell yeah. Hell no. Nah. Hell yeah. But they will be in the mix because I do believe in a still. I think they're a Super Bowl contender for sure with that team. This is all Tomlin needed to silence all the critics because, in my opinion, he is one of the top three head coaches in football. I'm with you on that. Uh, I've said the same thing. Hell yeah, hell nah. I'm going to go hell yeah as well, Smitty. Uh, hell yeah, hell nah. Baker Mayfield robbed Tampa Bay. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. There we nah, go. The, 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 price, the, the price of the brick is the price of the brick. You know, $33 million a year for a starting quarterback coming off of leading the team to playoffs. I mean, that's about – that's less than Derek Carr got to go to the Saints. No doubt. Uh, I say hell yeah because I agree with you. I, I would have given him a one-year deal, and I would have I would have drafted somebody or I would have brought in a Flacco or somebody for a year, uh, something else, and got, got cheaper and got better around them. They did sign Levante, Juco product. I like that. They did some things in Tampa that they – in the offseason I like, but I just – Mike Evans. They didn't get younger, Sean. They didn't they get didn't. younger, in my opinion. They didn't. They didn't get younger. They didn't get more explosive. But uh, they kept all their ring of honor guys. So, Hell yeah, Man, hell no. Nah. Mac Jones will take over in Jacksonville eventually. Hell yeah. Hell no. Hell huh? yeah. Lawrence always gets hurt. He's going to start. When you say Ooh, take over, I, like I, don't mean, I, don't mean, I don't mean replace Trevor Lawrence. I mean, when That's I say take I over, it. oh, I, I took it as will he start games in Jacksonville. Oh. So, I, yeah, I, I, that was my hell yeah. I mean, what did you mean by the question? That exactly that. He'll take over. No, no. Well, uh, taking no, no, over saying, means you got hurt, you got pulled, something. It don't matter how you no, take no, no, over. No, I'm saying, I'm saying like Tom Brady took over for Bledsoe and, and mean, it was a wrap, or you mean injury? he played two it games an until Devin Moore got back type shit. It was an injury, Smitty. That's what happens. Oh, I, I don't know. Hey, hey, I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. I'm going to lean towards JB a little bit on this one, Smitty. I mean, you know Jacksonville is going to pay Trevor this big deal, but be honest with yourself. Since that collapse in the second half against Justin Herbert and the Chargers, he really had not played that good. Mm. Mm. He played better against the Chiefs the year they could have won. They could have beat the Chiefs, uh, what was that, last year? Two years ago. They should have beat the Chiefs two years ago in yeah. law. Hey, we got a big time Jacksonville fan in the chat. I know he is pissed off. He missed one game in three seasons. What are we talking about? He's pissed hey, off. Whatever. <laughs> hey, Sean King, I appreciate you jumping on here. It is tell truth truth telling Thursday with Sean King. And he'll be on every Thursday. Pound the like, subscribe, become a member, follow Sean on Instagram. Um, and uh we'll be back next week with Sean. We'll be back tomorrow for a fearless Friday, fired up Friday, free game Friday. As we'll break down some more uh, free agents picks that have happened. Sean, I appreciate you joining us, dog. I'll see you uh, next week. Thanks for having me. Don't forget, Keith Thurman, shocking the world, baby, knocking out Tim Zoo. When's Ooh. that fight? The 30th. I think it's the 30th. Uh, so we'll talk before that. All right. All right, fellas. Hey, we're going to have Sean and Steve on every Thursday for that. I might side bet with Sean on that because ain't it Thurman getting his ass beat. <laughs> you with Steve? Yeah, Tim is 100. I I'm probably going to put money on it. Tim Zoo is 100% winning. I'm, I know for I've never been more confident in my life. Tim Zoo was 100 percent winning that fight. Facts, huh? A fact. No, it's a fact. Like no bullshit. 
Like, JV, I know you're a gambler. If you're going to bet, please put money on Tim I'm Zoom. I'm betting against your facts. All right. You're going to lose money. I'm telling you. the most money that night on prize picks. Sean speak from his heart. Head on over to prize picks, by the way, and get all of Smitty and JV's picks. We're going to make some tomorrow with Jeff Nadu. We're going to make our own tomorrow and set up a Friday of this weekend's prize picks pick. We'll give you some free game. On Friday, shout out to TikTok, who's going to get probably get banned here any minute. Um, and then uh, everybody else in the like, pound the like, subscribe, become a member. Over 3,200 people in here of all across all platforms. Appreciate that. And uh, we need more members on YouTube. We need more subscribers on YouTube. We got to get 50,000. We got to get 100,000. We got to get a million. That's what we got to get. So we can get in the studio so you can see how I really carry the show um in person so having said that we'll be back tomorrow free game friday pound that like subscribe appreciate everybody in the chat everybody on tiktok everybody on twitter we'll see you tomorrow peace issues get pressed so fast you don't get sacked like bags and back it's and jason brown kill the ass a rap